one who's oh. as incredibly slick as Gaston. I just started recording, by the way. Good. Oh, well, hello there, people. I'm glad that you can basically join us for another session. Hopefully you were, you didn't basically miss Duke Devonshire too much. Do not worry there, folks. You will not basically be deprived of my excellence for too long. I hear snickering. Where is that snickering coming from? <laughs> okay, who's laughing? Reveal yourself. <laughs> Nobody laughs at Duke Devonshire and gets away with it. Turns out there's, turns out there's one of the pirates. <laughs> turns out it's one of the pirates, pirates in the back. <laughs> Found you! Oh, fuck. Punches him. Oh. <laughs> See, what did I say? He laughed at me and he didn't get away with it. That is what you can expect from the might of Duke Devonshire. But yes, enough praising of me. Now, watch me as I now go ahead and defeat these ne'er-do-wells. Wait, how are we the ne'er-do-wells in this situation? You're attacking us. Because I said so. I'm dying. <laughs> Alright. Oh no! The dragon is dying! Aha, uh -huh, yes! My ability! You know, working! <laughs> oh no, his abilities are working somehow! Whatever his abilities may be! <laughs> Well, you see, I have a lot of amazing abilities there, my fine friend. One of them happens to be my overwhelming masculinity. As a specimen, I am intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know that basically, like, Gaston is basically meant to be, like, a complete fucking jerk and stuff like that. But damn, is this fucking song not basically like fucking campy as hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you ain't wrong about that. It's like Gaston was just one of those villains I was never capable of taking seriously. <laughs> Yeah. 
That is fair. That is very fair. Haha, <laughs> 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 we did it. <laughs> we took out <laughs> <laughs> we had to fight you each other for one. <laughs> you, you man, you, he managed to take out one before the battle even began. <laughs> I think it was second. I had a timer going for my dinner. Okay. All right. Mm. Uh. I'll I'll be 100% honest. It's like uh I'll be 100% honest. It's like uh this is this was indeed something for me basically like uh uh basically doing some things for this game. <laughs> I, I honestly, honestly hope that basically that this uh, people will enjoy this game because I, I had fun. I had fun basically making this one, like I do with basically a lot of my games. But this this one, I basically made a lot of improvements, and I hope that basically like the that the players enjoy them. <laughs> As well as yeah. the additions that I added. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if it's basically too noticeable with the personal skills, but it's like I'm, I actually tried to basically make them a bit shorter in text this time around. Yeah, they're actually a little bit shorter in text this t these t these times. Yeah, it's it's like basically kind of like for two reasons, so like basically kind of making it so that basically like characters can always have room to grow, and that the fact of, eh, you know what, start things off relatively simple. Do do do. Uh huh. Oh. <laughs> oh, I see that you're re you're reading your stuff. <laughs> oh, and I see that, and I see that a what? I see that an old, I see that an old weapon actually got actually got a little bit of an upgrade. Uh, all of these weapons received themselves quite the upgrade. <laughs> I can tell. I will, say, I will say it seems like seems like they seem like they all have the same first effect. <laughs> or for, for, first multiple choice. Yeah, that, that's kind of just something I kind of wanted to do. Um, kind of make it so that basically, like, uh, if you if you guys don't have any big plans that round, it's just like, eh, I'll just increase the damage output. <laughs> Uh-huh. Or, or say if basically if, like, the other effects have no practical application against basically, like, uh, the enemies that you're fighting inside that encounter, it's like, uh, you basically at least have the option to basically, like, increase the might of the dagger. You at least have a option.
Yeah. It's like personally when it came down to the daggers, it, at least inside my opinion, I kind of feel like that basically in terms of basically variety in terms of their effects and like flexibility, I didn't really did that much with them. As I felt like that from kind of looking back at like all the old daggers descriptions, I'm like, honestly, like a lot of the daggers were pretty samey. I mean, I guess that's fair. Yeah. Doo -doo -doo. And I also did notice that when basically the multiple choice, uh, fe the multi choice daggers became a thing, it's like the players tend to gravitate more towards them than all the other daggers. And I kind of see the reason why. Uh, basically, like having the ability to kind of like choose how you want to basically like have the weapon function at that time being. It's pretty actually like it's actually pretty like it basically makes it so that the weapon's more flexible. And also, the off chance of getting all three is definitely a factor. Or in this case, doubling the effects. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, there's a lot of things that I basically liked adding to the game and stuff. And I kind of like how basically the game's kind of slowly evolving. I mean, some people say that I'm kind of like, uh, basically like, uh, bleeding this, like, uh, this whole, like, combat system dry and everything, or running it, or basically, like, over it. But... I'm, I'm saying right here, as a person that inside the past that basically said that he's not good at handling combat, or not really good with basically like, uh, a bit basically like implementing combat systems. The fact that I'm actually now making a combat system that doesn't only work well, but just gets better over time is honestly an accomplishment for me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And the fact that basically the players basically enjoy basically the system that I'm slowly making is is also a bonus. I can imagine. I'm one of them after all. I'll be right back. Gave you two pieces of chicken diesel. You don't need a bird. <laughs> <laughs> no, you chubby sausage. I'm not giving you more food. You had three pieces. You had three pieces. Of you had two pieces of chicken, and, and I gave you hot dogs. Come on, you don't need any more. Oh my god, that's a fat, chubby dog. <laughs> Diesel's fat. He constantly wants to eat. <laughs> it's like he sees food and he just immediately wants it. I honestly don't think I've ever seen this dog full before. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, as in other additions and everything, um, it's like when it did came down to, oh, thanks, oh, hip, thanks, Drago, that actually is helpful. <laughs> what? What do you do? Uh, he basically went to the spells tab since I was actually going to do that anyway. <laughs> 
Ain't that just hilarious? Yeah, it's like um, basically it's like uh, one one thing I kind of had basically like a thing that I noticed quite a bit inside the game, and this is kind of like a big like factor. Once I had basically like the assist action become a thing, and this is also to a lesser extent to basically the quick action. Um, that the fact that those were actions that your characters weren't really using very often. Um, and that, that was basically due to several factors of, like, y you guys basically not really being sure what to basically use it on, or, in, in Neo's case, not even basically feeling, uh, sometimes even forgetting what the click action does. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, basically, it's the best way to think about the quick action is just think about it as an interrupt. Do do do. Mm -hmm. So that that's kind of why I basically developed basically these new little trinkets and everything called the items and the relics. As I'm thinking of basically renaming the items into artifacts because that's actually a better name. <laughs> Ah, yes, but the yeah. artifact scythe, anyways. Yeah. It's, this was me also combining basically another factor of, like, a part of the game that hasn't been used too much. Um, it's not like it's been not used at all, but I kind of want, want to make it so that basically, like, uh, stamina and mana matters more. This was kind of like a part of me, like me trying to basically make things that kind of seemed a bit lesser or not as important and have them kind of basically have much more of a use. So, yeah, the the players now basically have themselves basically like have basically these things called basically artifacts and basically like relics. You can tell something's an artifact when they have that little like uh, circle thing uh, symbol and everything. Uh, basically, what what type of action they require can basically vary and everything. But yeah, it's like uh, if the players want to, they can basically like uh, uh, Drago can basically use this lucky silver coin and everything. And as long as he has the stamina in order to pay for it, he can basically keep using it. I also kind of like the fact that, they, that, they, that, these, that these things also have RP effects. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, ba I basically kind of gave basically these artifacts some like small little RP effects and everything. Um, j just so basically like, uh, uh, j just so that they basically like the players could even maybe think of ways how to basically like incorporate them outside of like combat encounters. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Or maybe th think of basically funny roleplay ways in order to utilize them. Mm. And then there's basically like uh, the relics and everything. Uh, you can tell something is a relic when they have that little diamond symbol and everything. Um, just like basically like, uh, ju just like basically like the artifacts, they basically like have themselves their look, uh, basically their like costs and everything. Um, they basically require a certain action. Um, the thing that could, uh, basically like, uh, there are different ways that basically like, uh, relics do differentiate and everything. How basically, like, the relics do tend to be, like, more on kind of, like, the passive side. Uh, basically, like, relics are a bit more, like, active inside the battle. Also, that the fact that basically the relics do basically require a role, where, as you can basically see, utilizing the artifacts, they do not require a role. Yes.
Yeah. Do to do. Um, basically me showing off like a little bit of another thing. Um, relics and basically like uh, relics and stuff. They tend to have the tendency of basically only having one effect. But then we have stuff like legendary relics. Like basically Neo's character's magic conch. <laughs> All I own the magic conch. Ooh, I just noticed a little slight error. Oh. Let me see. There we go. Yeah. Also, Neo, I basically made it so that I also brought up basically the light magic effects and everything, just so you can basically see them and everything. Do -do -do. Ah, gotcha. But yeah, it's so like, uh, yeah, so, so, some of these relics and everything, I kind of just had some, like, funny little, like, applications for them. It's like, uh, with, with basically, like, this thing I even referenced, basically, uh, the user can pull the magic conscious magical string asking it for advice or a question, and you might get an answer. <laughs> There's no if, and, or, but you just might get an answer. You might get an answer. You... You might not like the answer, but you might get an answer. <laughs> I also basically... Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, fuck? Oh, man. Better hope that basically, like, uh, Neo gets that lucky with basically these flasks. Yeah, we also kind of have, like, basically our gold consumables. The um, Yeah. Specifically, these are basically good old potions, and I did sort of, like, alter how basically the potions work. Kinda. <laughs> Kinda. Yeah. Yeah, it's, ba it's basically, like, when it comes down to it, it's like the potions no longer stack. Like, I'm kind of getting rid of stacking with basically the consumables. But I made it so that basically the, when it comes down to the potions and everything, it's like, uh... They, they basically have more uses depending on basically, like, what rating it is. Like, uh, basically these things are kind of like a level one... Are basically like a level one consumable. Um, so basically it's like they have five uses and everything. So I kind of just marked down how many uses of basically like uh, uh, Neo has of each of his consumables like down here and everything so he can just keep track of that. Yeah, it's handy. Ooh, fuck, I forgot to basically update his skill caps. Hmm. Xander, why did that... Why didn't you told me this? You betray me, Xander. <laughs> Damn you, Xander. Why you why you be like this? Why you gotta be so mood? Why you have to be so rude? Don't you know that the people do? You got to marry that girl, marry her anyway. Got to marry that girl, no matter what you say. But yeah, um, yeah, basically it's like, uh, with, with this, we just have ourselves, uh, our good old friend, Neo, him having himself like, uh, a bunch of potions and hopefully he's not going to be hit by some sort of curse that makes it so that basically like uh 
things that are supposed to heal you kills you instead, and then the ch and then the audience decide to basically have him keep it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hashtag not salty. <laughs> <sighs> Okay, I'm not actually salty about that situation, but seriously, fuck you, fuck you, Ulu Cafe. You're blaming that shit on me? No, that was your fault. You had an option. <laughs> you had her keep it. You did this? You did this to us? It was you. <laughs> yeah, I gotta be honest, it's like... Honestly, I'm just glad that basically your characters managed to get so lucky inside battles and everything, because, Jesus Christ, the fact that you guys didn't have a healer, that was kind of scary. <laughs> yeah. Yes, no healers, and these are the fucking Celestial Dragons, who would, who would pretty much go down in a heartbeat. I eat well most well more well mostly well mostly Romero but, but still. I mean the Romero then went down as much as we thought he would, so there's that. Luckily. Mm -hmm. I mean to be honest, the only person he ever went down to theoretically went down to is a uh, fucking ro Rolo. <laughs> and I think someone else, but I don't remember. I mean, he did get he did get his. I, I think I, I think he went down during basically the fight with the during the fight with the Freak Corp guys, but then he was like revived by coffee. Well, it was great to have around. Uh, Wait, I think that was I think that was Neo's character that got not that not, got not, that not, that got knocked out. No, no, that that was during that was basically during the fight with basically like uh, Snowbell. Oh right, 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 right. And I guess, and I guess also, and I guess also by by technicality, uh, fucking uh, Mr. Snowman, Mr. I forget his name, Mr. Snowman. What was his What was his fucking name? He was part of the Marines. Oh fuck! I actually don't remember his name. Oh well, fuck! Well, I, well, in any case, he theor theoretically he did go down to him. But he got back up because of a, uh, because of combat yeah. rules in that case. Yeah, R rules for basically that like uh, tournament scenario. Yeah. And somehow fucking won. <laughs> then well, then again, by, the by by somehow you mean him chugging down like a fucking potion that tripled his stats. <laughs> Which was a crit, mind you. Look, look, I'll be honest, I was not expecting the crit. <laughs> I did not expect I that. Was, I, was, I, was, I was expecting it either. <laughs> I mean, I put, down that, I put down that tripling effect on crits just as basically like a joke, because it's going to be unlikely that would happen, and it happened. <laughs> <laughs> Did we just kind of like make? Did we just kind of like? Did we just kind of like did, did the fact of that? Did we just kind of did the fact of? You know what? Since this is a Romero, might as well give him some edge. <laughs> did we just like? As we just like increase the stats as well. It's D and D stats. Yeah. Do do. Uh, that's a what? That's yeah. a one. That's a once in a lifetime thing that I don't think I'll get. That I don't think I'll have again. <laughs> but who knows? Yeah, and and don't worry, people. I I plan to come back to basically One Piece. Uh, one Piece is not going to basically. Uh, the Celestial Dragon Run's not going to be the only run. <laughs> I plan to come back to one piece. 
Oh please, 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 the, the what the fuck is Gregor? What the hell is the uh fuck fu fucking fuck boys that fuck boy mercenaries are going to be doing? <laughs> Chop liver. Yeah, we're gonna be coming back to them. Don't worry. Yeah, honestly, I'm just not really sure what group I'm gonna basically like. Uh... Uh, what, which group we're gonna do when we get back? I don't know if we're gonna basically be doing the bounty hunters or the Johnny Johnny the Myros crew. Not a hundred percent sure. Fair enough. Yeah. Oh, also, it's like. You know, I was meaning to basically talk about this to you guys, like, during, like, uh, last weekend and everything. But then we got so distracted by basically, like, talking about, like, fucking Pokemon and Pokemon Showdown and stuff. And, like, doing basically, like, a Pokemon, uh, like, a Pokemon, like, uh, fucking tournament series with people from the Ulu Cafe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I want. I did wanted to basically discuss basically stuff with basically my hero and everything, or like JoJo and stuff. But it's like we got so distracted with that 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 I just then that we just ended up not talking about it. Ah, that's fair enough. Yeah, so pr probably, like, at some point this, like, uh, weekend, I would basically like to kind of, like, uh, talk about that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. That would be nice. Very nice. Diesel. D Diesel, come on. I gave you... Three pieces of chicken at this point. Just leave me alone. You have water right there. If you if you want something, just drink your water. <laughs> it's a massive bowl of water, Diesel. Don't act like it's just a cup. <laughs> the heck is on that pup's mind? Food. <laughs> It's always food. Why are you licking the floor, Diesel? Diesel will wheeze this pup for sometimes. All right, I guess it's confirmed. Diesel is, is on crack. Uh, Diesel was on crack. Yes, that, that, is, that is basically the lesson that we have learned. It will be the only lesson we, we learn until uh, something else happens. Okay, people. No, I, think it, I think it is time for us to now go ahead and start our escapades. The escapades? Yes, our escapades. Mm hmm. You wetty there, gentlemen. Mm hmm. Right there, whenever you are. Oh, 
Okay. Let's do this. We will go ahead and now eat the popcorn. Nom, 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 nom. You guys will eat the popcorn. I'm not a huge fan of the stuff. I will now take the popcorn and shove it down down uh, Neo's throat. <laughs> Eat your popcorn, Neo. Eat your popcorn. You will eat the popcorn. The popcorn will reign supreme. You will love the popcorn, Neo. <laughs> Welcome to the popcorn cult. We're known as the Cornheads. Ask my brother, I'm not interested. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> well, alright then. <laughs> Oh yeah, do do. Well, I think I'm now gonna go ahead and finish my. I'll go ahead and finish my monologuing, as I'll now go ahead and beat you guys up for no reason. But what? But why though? Because I can. But why though? Because fuck you. <laughs> Why, though? Stop questioning me. Who are you, my dad? I don't know, are we? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> the second way of, fi uh, of fighting a group of pirates. Make them question themselves. I'm so confused now. <laughs> Why is my voice constantly changing? I don't know. Hmm, oh I don't know. God. Do you have a, oh my you God. Have a I think, identity uh... crisis? I'm having an identity crisis. Tracy. <laughs> Hey, Chihuahua! Hey, <laughs> Chihuahua, Baba Booey! Hey, Chihuahua, there, amigo! Uh, okay. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and basically uh, get, get basically uh, this show on the road. Time for us to go ahead and eat marshmallows. Yeah, marshmallows. Are, mar are marshmallows okay in your book, Neo? Love them. <laughs> Plot twist, there's popcorn inside those marshmallows. <laughs> I think it's those jelly bean assortments all over again. <laughs> oh, you're talking about bean boozled. No, actually, uh... Oh, you're not? I'm not talking about that, I've never actually done that. Oh, you're not familiar with Bean Boozled? No, I'm familiar with it. I've just never done it. Oh, okay. Wait, so you mean that you had basically like something similar? Uh, around, around here in uh, some stores that you in some stores that you can bit is that you can get these uh, jelly bean assortments with all sorts of flavors, all of them good ones. And I have a common tendency to mistake the uh, popcorn ones for the marshmallow ones. <laughs>
All right then. Ba ba ba. Then let's go ahead and do the bamboozled challenge. I'm only joking. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that even if someone paid me. <laughs> I wouldn't do that for I, I wouldn't do that for a penny. I wouldn't do that for a Quandock bar. You wouldn't do it for a penny, so would you do it for a master's card? I knew it was a long shot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's get let's go ahead and get into this. As I'll now go ahead and throw up the first torn order of this series. Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay, let us go ahead and do this. I see. Oh my gosh, there's two Duke Duke and Shires. Well, he has two squads of pirates. Fair enough. Yes, I have two squads. My second initiative is basically is basically half of the first roll. Rounded down. <laughs> it's an easier oh. way for me to handle it handle this. <laughs> Fair enough. Also it makes it so that basically you guys don't get overwhelmed by basically multiple enemies consecutively taking their turn. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Let me see here. Oh, I'm not hey, I'm that. on the initiative. I'm on the initiative now. Oh, okay. Okay, your initiative's now free. <laughs> One lower than my roll. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hey, wow, what? like, man, man, no one's in a hurry to do anything. No one, no one's in a hurry to do anything, yeah. The party is dumbfounded. This guy's confused after what we just, after that whole talk. I'm not confused. I bounce back rather quickly. Hmm. But yes, now I will show you my divine powers. Sir, since when did you have divine powers? Shut up, you. Divine powers, you say? <laughs> yes, my divine powers. As the dude basically takes out a blunderbuss. <laughs> oh. 
Uh, that's not divine powers. That's a gun. Fuck you, they're divine powers. <laughs> As he'll now go ahead and basically aim his gun at Vasquez because he's been annoying him the most. <laughs> I've done nothing. You have done everything. I will now blast you in the face. Prepare to get your extreme makeover. Oh no, not the extreme makeover. Oh fuck my lip. <clears throat> <sighs> okay. <clears throat> uh, okay, I see here. I guess I can use it. I guess I can use this one. Oh, actually, it's a, oh, actually, this is an area. I don't worry about that. Okay. Oh, I guess the time for I guess the time for the good old good old party time. Party. Also, also the first also the first magic. Let's we'll see how it goes. Okay. It's at this moment that you turn yourself into a flock of crows. I mean ravens. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of them. It's only five, don't worry. To this point, that basically Vasquez transforms into basically a, into a flock of ravens, causing the attack coming at him to basically be cancelled out. Ka, ka, ka. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, this Duke guy would have to have next level aim in order to basically shoot a bird out of the sky with a fucking blunderbuss. <laughs> try try to try the fucking sniper bird with a shotgun. It's not gonna go well. <laughs> Fair enough. Why do you think I should? I mean, it is a blunderbuss. Why do you think I would turn it into a flock of ravens? I mean, there was you saying, well, then again, this does damage in there. <laughs> uh, 
I mean, th that, I mean, usually that's part, part. That's usually the thing that usually gets me. It's just, it's just area, it's just area, area things. <laughs> Yeah. Well, think about this in other tabletop games. And basically, if your tile leaves a targeted area, then that means he, his target's now no longer there. So the attack is canceled out. I guess that's fair. I just I just imagine I do because like what? Um, actually, I'll have him do a roll. Do do do. What? What type of tom trickery is this? <laughs> Uh, sir, I'm pretty sure that's trick magic. No, 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 there's an obvious explanation for this. He can shapeshift into a flock of crows. Those are ravens. They're crows! Oh, God, God. Fun fact, uh, Vasquez can talk normally while he's crows. Or, or fucking ravens. Now I'm tripping, now I'm tripping myself. <laughs> Oh no. Yeah, so that will be something I can confirm. While he's basically a flock of ravens, he can still talk normally. But there will be the weird factor that the uh, birds will all be speaking in unison. <laughs> oh god. Oh god, I think that would probably confuse anyone who does who doesn't have who is not that smart. <laughs> Engage vicious mockery. Psychic damage applied. <laughs> You could probably also roleplay it that Vasquez is probably skilled enough in, enough with the spell as he, he can just make it so that only one Raiden can talk. <laughs> no, the, the person I think you'll probably find it funny if, if, if all five of them actually talk in unison. Though yeah, though yes, he though yes, he'll probably most likely be skilled enough to at least only have what to at least have to at least make it so that only one of them can talk. <laughs> yeah, so he probably when he's speaking with his allies, it's like, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna have one of these guys talk so they don't get confused. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my. What type of trickery is this? I now say, you will not basically trick me with these tricky stuff, you <laughs> trickster. We will, we will, we will, we will, we will, have, have to see. <laughs> okay, that will basically be, uh, that will basically be... Uh, that will basically be like uh, Mr. Duke Devon Shire. It's basically uh, two of the pirates basically comes up as they're going to go ahead and attack two of these uh, ravens. Oh no. Don't attack ravens. <laughs> okay. Uh, basically, these guys managed to basically kill kill basically one of the ravens. Nope. Uh, uh, 
one of the pirates are basically like uh, marching their way all, all the way to Runar. Oi, take this lid! What kind of damage does the magic conch do? Knowledge damage? <laughs> it does magical damage. Nope. Is that any time to see what this, what this magical conch does? Now's the time! Conch! <laughs> okay, you can now go ahead and basically uh, put a, <laughs> a light blessing on one of your allies. I'm going to put a, a blessing on this crow. You cannot do that. Okay. Uh, Aaron then? He's not your ally. <laughs> The unconscious vein. <laughs> the unconscious vein gains himself a light blessing. <laughs> okay, so I, so I can't bless the crows. <laughs> Ravens. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, cur currently, basically, Vasquez is not considered an ally since he is currently Ravens. But plus, there would be no benefit for putting it on the Ravens. It's like, basically, the moment he just transforms back, it's now Vasquez now. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll let. Okay, I'll, I'll basically let you know this. The magic conch can basically be. Uh, effect can basically work on yourself. I'll just let you know that. Okay. But, uh, this doesn't exactly help you. Because the magic conch doesn't deal damage, it instead restores health. So you <laughs> heal yourself. <laughs> This you, is the heal the you, you heal the pirate who's at full health. <laughs> I, heal, I heal self, turning this into the most one-sided game of back and forth ever. Uh, I'll let you take back the action. Okay. I, I'm not a stickler. <laughs> uh, all right, all right. Uh, in that case, I'm, I'm going to just wield the hand axe and uh, use that. <laughs> you could try avoiding. That is true. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I'm going to dodge instead. Yes, I'd like to basically show you there, Neo, that basically that there that there is basically no void void thing, uh, void basically like skill right here, right here. It's right. It's basically right underneath your passive wisdom. Huh? <laughs> oh yeah, I see oh. that. Boop. Yes, Vasquez manages to basically dodge the axe, as his axe is now stuck in the log. Oi! Oi, there you dumb bloke! Now you basically be dodging me its axe! This axe wasn't cheap, you know! It wasn't? Huh. Yeah. Yeah, this cost me. This cost me about a thousand gold. Uh, no offense, I honestly couldn't tell when you were swinging it at my face. Have Rudar basically give uh, give basically like a, a basically a per go ahead and basically ro roll basically like a, a basically his uh, trading skill real quick. Uh, go ahead and roll that. 
There it is. 24! Yeah, this guy got ripped off. This is a terrible quality axe. <laughs> uh, uh, my friend, I hate to play, I hate to break this to you, but you got scammed. What? Oh, dang it, all again! Yeah, this thing's at least worth a hundred, and that's at best. This is always happening. My wife is going to be so angry at me. Oh. Not his pirate wife. It is now basically the unconscious corpse of Bane's turn. As the crow is now picking him on what the head. What happened to Vasquez? What are you talking about? He's not on the turn ba tracker. Bane oh no. Va Vasquez basically... Uh, oh fuck, I deleted him when I turned him into crows. Yeah. I'll put him yeah. back. It's fine. Basically, Vasquez went after Vayne anyway. Alright. Yes. Um, as basically, the crows are now... <laughs> Why am I saying crows so that much now? Because the seagulls know. are now pecking Vayne's head. But when Vane wakes up, he's gonna sh and sees what's going on. He's gonna show. He's gonna show this iron rod up someone's ass. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but yes. Yeah. Alright, time for all right, time for Vasquez to stop stop being to stop to stop being in a crow and crow and uh in in the uh, Raven forms. Yeah. Well boys, time to go back together. As Vasquez is now basically back, back into uh, back as his normal self now. Apparently, he's upside down. Mm -hmm. That or he's hand standing. Both. But yes. But yes. Yeah. Let me see here. <clears throat> now, as this, now as this goes, is the good old. Little tricky maneuver of going backwards. Mm. 
do do. Oh. We're gonna get tricky up in here. Yes. We're gonna get tricky. We're gonna get tricky. Tricky, 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 tricky. Yeah. But yes. Oops, didn't mean to do that. All right. <clears throat> all right, trip. All right, trip. All right, since the all right, since these boys since these boys want wants to attack my attack my my own good c creation of crow of ravens. I think it's time for good some good old pun punishment. Hmm. What in what in God's name could you basically be saying? I mean, Naga's name. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, you're not a firm believer of Naga? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> hey, I have Naga's I have Naga's face tattooed on my ass. I'm only joking. <laughs> oh my, you do? <laughs> but yes, anyways. As a as a raider as a raider's knife go, goes over to this boy. Oh, my chest! Right in the tent. I'm gonna be and I'm gonna be choosing the uh. The uh the the second actually no uh pfft, not the second no <laughs> the second no oh. uh I'll be t uh I'll be true you mean to say uh you mean to basically say like the third and fourth one I mean I guess the third and fourth one would like would actually be probably a good idea because we have by the time the because we have Aaron over here. <laughs> yeah. Do do. Yeah. By the way, can I do can I double? Uh yeah, you can double him. So wait. That is sweet delicious. Yeah. Okay, uh Okay, if I remember Okay, if I remember correctly, let's see here. Also, also, don't worry, guys. You can basically use all of your guys' skills and everything. I, I was going to basically explain all that stuff after this encounter. Addy. Like, towards okay. the end of the session. Do, do, let, let's have some mystery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, but yes. <clears throat> now, now, instead of doubling him, I'll actually, I'll actually change up a... And I'll actually change the... Way uh, use a different weapon to attack the guy beside him. <laughs> what? What indeed?
and now you and and now I will you uh, and now I'll use the se- I'll use the se- second and second and third effect. You get a bleed. You get a bleed. With. Well, no, man. Oh, damn, there's now cow drops all over the place. We're gonna have to be graceful, like ballet dancers. Oh, damn it. Oh, my mother was right. I would regret not taking those ballet lessons. <laughs> <laughs> But that is not all. Uh, I think you know what I. I think you know what I mean. <laughs> this <laughs> good old terrain <laughs> shenanigans. <laughs> ah yes, yes. What terrain would you like to basically place down, my fine friend? Hmm. I'll be honest, I don't remember I don't remember any of the terrain. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah. I guess I I guess I guess just to keep it simple because because it's because it's because it's like what's on the on the on on righteous authority. Uh, might as well just keep it simple, just just say dangerous terrain. <laughs> yeah. T- tell you what, man. Uh, tell you what, man. In between the sessions, I'll actually basically put that information on basically your sheet, so you can basically quickly reference it on there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So dangerous terrain. Do do do. Uh, if anyone says, like, spaces in between him and his target. Or, I guess, in this case, targets. <laughs> uh, let me see. Blah, blah, blah. Actually, actually, yeah. It would be two spaces. Do, do. <clears throat> It's at this moment that basically the ground has been lit on fire. Oh my. <laughs> wow, uh, that that's a neat trick. I'm full I'm full of I'm full of surprises. It is now Duke Devon Shires. Quickly, Lincoln Poops, attack! Oh, fuck, I knocked one of them out. That's right. You two, don't sit around! But, Sawyer, we're kind of in a, in a messy situation right now. I don't care. All right, let's do this. (laughs) 
as both of these pirates over here basically trip over their own feet and fall into the fire. Oh no. <laughs> oh my god, they have cow drops in their feet. They're bleeding and they're on fire. <laughs> Another pirate's gonna take a swing at you, Neo, as he gets out his cutlass. And he, oh my god, a critical hit's coming your way. Oh no. Neo, no. Oh no. Uh, yeah, a, uh, uh, Drago, assistance, please. I promise you it's worth it. What kind of assistance be talking? Uh, self-preservation activate. It's at this moment that basically Runar uh, basically books it, runs behind Vasquez as the pirate runs after him. Runar gets behind Vasquez as basically he slams it, slams his like a uh, his cutlass basically against him. However, it seems that a magical force is basically like uh, pushing his attack away, dealing only half damage. I'm sorry, I'm not a fighter, you yeah. know this! Uh, uh, okay. I wonder who I won I wonder who inspired this skill. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I wonder who. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. now Dra now Drago get now Drago gets to be the shield. <laughs> uh, very funny because I think I think my character is the one that has the most health out of the group. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah, that's basically is what basically armor does. It basically makes it so that the next source of damage that like uh, your target will take will be halved. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but basically, so... that's kind of like this. That's kind of like the simple thing with the skill. It's basically like you jump and you bit jump behind an ally. They get basically the buff. They take the attack for you. They take half the damage. Da -da -da. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Okay, so, so it's a crit, so it has a plus five damage. Uh, that's twenty-four. Oh, oh, don't worry. The plus five damage was already added. No. So this basically deals like nineteen damage. Then it's half, so it's basically like uh, nine damage, like minus your DRs. Okay, so nine damage minus DRs. Yeah, yeah. So it's basically like take your CR and then basically like uh, your MR and then basically subtract that from the nine. I only lost six. I only lost six health out of thirty-six. <laughs> Not that bad. Uh, yes. Do do. And basically, uh, basically, since Vasquez was basically used as a human shield, he will get to basically he will basically get to like uh, counter attack, uh, counter attack the pirate that tried to attack Runar, but Runar won't. Yes. But before before basically he counter attacks that pirate, I'm just gonna have uh, the pirate that's after Vasquez basically attack him real quick. He's gonna go ahead and throw his uh, throwing axe at you. <laughs> point blank. Ah <laughs> uh, yes, point blank. Yes, point blank, oh. me fucker. <laughs> I can throw shit too. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Yeah. The bot has died. It seems. Oh well. 
Oh, back. Here, I'll put it back. Hopefully the, the music box does not be legay. Let's hope not either. Eh. But yes. Um. Actually. <laughs> Uh, I might still take I might still take the damage, but it's uh, but I think this is a little bit more funnier. <laughs> oh no! God damn it! Is it really gonna pull this shit? It probably will. Go go ahead. Just keep going with your turn. Don't mind me. Uh, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, well, well, I guess in any case, and I guess this, this is going to be in this sort of order. Um, actually, what order should I do first? Which order? I, 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 don't, I, I don't mind the order. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Well, I might as well just. I might as well. I might as well. Uh, I might as well just do. I might as well just do do the. Uh, might as well do the pirate that's in front of me. First. <laughs> but yes. Uh, as the as the pirate throws his axe point blank, Vasquez does get a good view of his throwing throwing throwing. A point blank. <laughs> yeah. So I might as well give this dude a round of applause. Yeah. For his ex for his excellent for form of th for form of throwing an axe. What? What? What's that? Uh, people che cheering me on? I, I never thought this would happen before. Yes! Yes, I did it! I made it! I did it! Screw you, Dad! <laughs> I told you I'll be successful. And that you are, my friend. Yeah. Yes! Yes! Good politicians! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, then I don't know. Then I don't know. Then I don't know. Know where he pulls. He pulls out righteous. Ju he pulls out righteous justice and and sh <laughs> and aims it to and aims it towards the pirate that tried to hit Runar. <laughs> uh, Righteous authority. Righteous authority. What the fuck? And I think, and I think, if I remember correctly, I can choose. I can choose. I can also choose. And I, I can. I can also choose. Choose to also choose two effects with with uh with uh with the, with the gun as well. Yes, you can. Yes. 
Honestly, the attempted purpose of basically the gun is to basically just like, uh, basically place basically. I basically made this gun with basically the idea of it basically synergizing with basically like uh, your one one like Hydra's racial. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I forget. I forget. What does Rocky Terrain do? Uh, Rocky Terrain. Uh, basically, Rocky Terrain. Basically, like uh, uh, the w the way that it uh, there but it basically inflicts uh, basically bleeding for every space a unit moves while moving through through the terrain. Ah. I see. Fo foggy terrains basically just makes it so that, like, uh, that basically ranked attacks basically, like, while units in it or basically aiming into it, it's just going to hit a random target. Ah, <laughs> uh, I see. Yeah, yeah, foggy terrain. We basically have seen it co quite a couple of times, and it caused some really hilarious results. Yeah, but remember the, remember the arc light saga? Children, that was funny. Uh, but yes, but yes. Actually, you know what? Since since he's on the ground, since he's on the ground, might as well make it, might as well make might as well make this a little bit more funny. As it as in right as in as as in the rocky tur as in rock the rocky terrain. Ha, ha, uh, ter Turns up, turns up un underneath, underneath va Vasquez. H him, him, per perfectly, ba perfectly ba balanced, ba balance, balancing on one leg on, on the rocky terrain. Then suddenly, then, then snaps his fingers as he switches places with the, with the, with the pirate that he shot. As the dude's basically kind of falling backwards after basically getting hit by basically that shotgun, he falls straight onto the rocky terrain. Oh, fuck, my back! Also, also, that pirate also has disadvantage. If he ever moves or does anything for the for the round. Hmm. Oh no! It, it just basically like uh, uh, with basically like uh, movement. Uh, it, it doesn't have disadvantage on everything. Basically, if you read it's like uh, your target must roll to move with disadvantage for the rest of the round. All uh, right. But yes, uh, but yes, if that if they, if the dude ever turn, if the dude ever turn, if, it, if the dude ever moves, yeah, he has disadvantage. Which I think it's pretty actually pretty fucking dangerous on rocky terrain. <laughs> I don't think about it. Uh, honestly, honestly, it's basically like uh, honestly, I think it's basically like can be a hindrance on any of these terrains, but especially with dangerous terrains, since if you end your turn on it, you take twenty five damage. <laughs> oh God. Oh jeez. The music bot is being finicky. Do I just need to now get another new music bot? Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, and it suddenly stabilizes the moment I call it out. <laughs> I don't care. It's... It doesn't excuse it. It really doesn't. I'm I'm on to you, music bot. Okay, it's now Aaron's turn. As Aaron's now gonna go ahead and basically like uh, start basically like uh, con uh, basically like casting a spell. As it's like you guys haven't really basically paid any mind to it at this moment, but you kind of realize that this guy's been basically casting spells the entire time without the use of any apparatus or basically a tome. Huh? 
Oh? Doodle doop. As basically, he then kind of starts basically conjuring, conjuring basically like a mini sun. As it then basically flies towards, uh, basically like uh, towards basically like uh, the guy that's currently on the rocky terrain. As it then basically hits him dead on. Boys, I think we found out. I think we found us. I think we found that second sun magic user. <laughs> huh? Second? What are you talking about? Sun magic is commonplace. Oh, that was Drago speaking. <laughs> oh, sorry, there, God. Then again, it's, was that really this character saying that, or was that Sergeant disguising himself as the character? You decide, people. Also, Ooh. fuck you, music bot. Yes, fuck you, music bot, for being a dick. If it's gonna keep on doing this, then it's like, uh, fuck. I'm gonna basically now just look into basically getting a new fucking music bot, because this is not fucking worth the headaches. It probably really isn't. If it's just gonna keep doing this. I mean, some people basically question why I basically, like, he, uh, basically, like, constantly have the music bot on during the sessions and everything. It's like, I mentioned it before, it's basically like the music basically helps me focus and everything. And I honestly don't like the dead noise. Well, I mean, that's fair enough. I mean, even when, it's basically even in situations where we're not talking, basically at least, like, uh, people can at least probably, like, listen to basically the music as we're basically being, like, quiet or, so or stuff. Do -do -do. Yeah. I also do basically try to find music that basically kind of fits the tone of basically the situation and everything. So, yeah. Okay. Aaron's now gonna go ahead and turn to basically like one of the uh, one of basically the pirates currently inside like uh, that uh, that the pit of fire, and then just <laughs> basically uh, basically like uh, launch basically another mini sunnet. It is now Runar's turn. It is now the Runar. The Runar. Alrighty, it is now time for the Runar to do his thing. <laughs> Alrighty. I am going to conch Vasquez. Oh, 
I'll hail the magic conch. Which one of these effects would you like to apply? Uh, would like to apply? I would like to bless this man. What kind of blessing are you going to give me? I like blessing. It says right here. Yes, but but which which one of these effects would you like to apply? Yes, there's. The, can you not look at the look at the light magic effects there, Neo? Which one? <laughs> Do you need glasses, Neo? Do you need to see? Hmm. I shall, uh, I shall give him a miracle. Okay, miracle is now applied to Vasquez. If his health were to ever get low, he will immediately heal thirty health. <laughs> Hey. Yes. And since I have two assist actions, I would also like to use the Unholy Grimoire. All right. I did the courtesy of basically putting uh, putting the Zombro underneath Eren. The, Z the Zombro only has basically one attack, that being his bro fist. Marvelous! What would you like to basically do with your, uh, where would you like to basically, like, uh, put your Zombros? I would like to send these Zombros after the, uh, you know, that, mm, I'm kind of feeling bad for that pirate uh, that got, uh, that kind of got shafted in the market. But he did try to chop me. So, two bro fists to the pirate. All right. Just go ahead and go into basically like the Zombro sheet, and you'll basically see its bro fish. Go ahead and see its bro fish. Go, go ahead and basically click that. Boop. As you can see, basically the bro fist has itself basically like uh, basically like one of two effects that you can trigger. When attacking with these hands. <laughs> nice. Other Zotum Bros will deal plus five. All right. Now have the other Zombro attack. Is this pirate still up? It's a banana. <laughs> yes, he's he has four health remaining. This one will attack twice. Oh wait, they're supposed to have twenty health, not thirty. Oh, in that case, it is down. No, 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 no. Oh. I was talking about the I was talking about the Zombros. Oh, okay. Ah. But yeah, here is the second Zombros, second Brofist. Okay, I'm gonna have this pirate basically try to dodge. Oh, he oh, dodges God. like a fucking he dodges like a fucking baller. The Zombros <laughs> just end uh, just end up doing the classic bro fist with one another. Yeah. 
the pirate then in return will basically go ahead and throw his throwing axe at basically this Zombro over here. I'll just go ahead and basically give this Zombro his own health bar. Doo -doo. You can see it, right? Yes. Yep. Okay. The only other thing I can possibly do with Runa right now is hand axe the hand axe a pirate. I don't know why. For some reason there I just some for some reason get a satisfaction of just having characters chuck axes at people. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, he has successfully dodged his ombros. And now he's got an axe coming at him from the side. Yeah, yeet. Yeah, yeet, indeed. Okay. I'll have him do a Hell Mary dodge, because why not? He gets hit. <laughs> I thought I was gonna have my epic gamer moment. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear about your axe, but you did kind of attack me. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to shut you I uh, shut you guys up for good. As Duke will come up to Vasquez. You've made a fool out of me long enough there, you clown. Time for you to go ahead and see the power of my great gun. Have you ever seen a Chekhov's gun? Well, you're about to be well acquainted with it. Just don't feel bad when I basically shove this thing up your sphincter. As he goes ahead and takes out his blunderbust. As he then, <laughs> as Vasquez, as Vasquez walks up, takes his cane, shoves it into the blunderbuss, it explodes. The dude's covered in salt. It just pulls out the righteous authority. You know this means war. <laughs> As you then basically shoot him point blank with the righteous Sephora. <laughs> uh. I just kind of want to do the whole. <laughs> do I do I want to do I want to switch it up? Do I want, do I feel like switching it up? <laughs> Hey, you do you, man. Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. But you know what? Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see if we can actually. Yeah. Okay, I'll choose the last effect and the and the rocky terrain, and and they just do the switcheroo. As again, with basically, oh fuck, it's pirate terrain. 
<laughs> oh my, a pirate! <laughs> As basically our good friend gets blown back, blown back onto his ass before he hits the ground, you switch places on him with him, and he falls straight on the rocky terrain. Oh, my posterior! My, my oh my, my oh my, yeah. Seems like someone took some. Seems like someone took it up, took took it up the butt instead. You know, it's now funny imagining a British person saying that. <laughs> oh my! Seems like that someone took it up the butt instead. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Sometimes I wish I can do a British accent. Unfortunately, I can't. <laughs> you're, do, you're, you're, you're trying your best with what you're capable of doing. It's the thought that counts. Yeah. I mean, you have me, the guy who's basically, like, good with accents, and I'm not even planning on having every character be, have a British accent. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, what, I mean, with what, what we did last session makes sense. Also, for the sake of diversity. Do -do -do. Yeah. So, like, I'm, I'm probably, I'm not going to probably give any character from Avalon basically like an accent that doesn't fit. It's like it wouldn't make sense to have have any of them have like a Mexican accent. <laughs> Hello there, eh? <laughs> Hello there, Holmes. Hey, sir, you wanna go, you wanna basically buy some, like, uh, drugs from me from behind I'm the Walmart? <laughs> I tell you, I got clean shit, man, clean shit. Yeah, and all it costs is uh, 3 fit fitty. <laughs> it only costs 3 fitty. Yeah. But yeah, but yes, but yes, Rocky Terrain and 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 also roll to move disadvantage. Okay, okay. As basically these these three guys basically come up as these six basically just to go off the opposite direction. <laughs> They're like, nah, I ain't fucking with this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, our captain's getting this ass kicked a little oh, silly. <laughs> Wow, it's just like these. It's, wow, it's just like these folks are just so loyal. <laughs> Only if he's also the guy who pays us. Wow, didn't it? Wow. Oh wow! Oh wow! Oh wow! Then oh wow! Then he, man, 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 he must not pay to the others. <laughs> Only they pro probably like value their lives more than money. Okay, these pirates are gonna go one on one against these Zombros. <laughs> Who will win? <laughs> Who will win? A Zombro or a pirate? Meh! Meh! That one pirate ain't having luck. This one pirate right here takes his axe, swings it at basically the Zombro. The axe shatters against his skull. What the fuck? Guys, I think we got chipped. <laughs> and the Zombro Shabro feasts him back. Oh, God. The Bro misses a century. <laughs> The Zombro basically winds back his fist and knocks the fucker out. <laughs> well, I guess I guess it's I guess it's only a fair trade. <laughs> uh.
as a, as a, as, a, as a surviving Zombro and a surviving pi- pirate thought Jojo walking to each other. <laughs> <laughs> the pirate then basically goes, ola, 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 ola. Then basically the, the then the Zombro goes, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Bro, oh, that's on both wrists. <laughs> the Zombro basically has entered the Matrix. It's, it's basically dodging all of his attack, all of the pirates' attacks. The Zombro then goes in for basically his counter. <laughs> As he then basically punches the pirate basically in the stomach. Who will win this epic battle? Who will indeed? <laughs> Renard blinks. No way. I'm gonna actually leave that era to the to the, the Zombro. That's heck. I think he deserves to finish that one. Uh, this pirate right here is going to take his spear and he's gonna basically go ahead and try to stab Vasquez with it. Oh no! Oh, I don't hurt the cat in. He's the one who buys us. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, Vasquez then basically transforms into a flock of ravens again. I feel like I now need to get you basically like a raven, basically like image and everything. <laughs> uh, maybe. Probably wouldn't hurt. Yeah, do the do. Um, yeah, I'll just go ahead and I'll see what I can do in between sessions. Do the do. Yeah. Do-do-do. As he goes ahead and tries to hit you, you then turn into basically ravens. Mm. Oh, oh. Man, man, man. You, man, man. You, you, you got, you got close, close, close. Uh, I'm confused now. <laughs> As the unconscious body of, of Bane is now getting dragged away by a badger. Oh no! The seagull start basically fighting the badger. Oh my god, the seagulls. They're protecting Vane. It is now Vasquez's turn. Yeah. Yes, it is my turn once again. Oh, you okay? You okay, man? I'm fine. I'm fine. Are you sure? You said you were dying. I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but yes. Actually, actually, hold on now. <laughs> yeah. 
no, 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 no. I, I should probably turn back. I should probably have Vasquez t- turn back into a fucking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you should, you should probably have him transform back. Yeah, these, yeah, yeah. These Ravens get hit. He's, he's gonna be knocked out. This is just gonna be. An e- this would just be him being easily, easy killable. Yeah, <laughs> well, especially killable, since, but... especially since Duke has his like blunderbuss. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if he yeah if he hits yeah if, yeah if Duke fires that blunderbuss and he hits one and he hits a, and he hits the flock of crows, oh boy, that's how I ain't gonna be in. I ain't gonna be. I ain't gonna be good. <laughs> but yes. Yeah. Okay then, back to human form. As the crows then basically uh, unite together as Vasquez appears once more. <laughs> as he gives, as he gives a little bit of a, ba- as he gives, gives a little bit of a bow with his, as he took takes off his hat, then, then then go then go then goes to then goes to uh, th- and st- uh, uh let's see here. Not good enough. As he go, as he goes over here, as as he then, as then he, as he then he side steps. It, as to, uh, as a as a as a bunch of that as a bunch of daggers come come from it come comes out from his sleeves. As one will go to, as, as one as one of them, as one of them will go to this pi this pirate, this pirate that tried to attack that tried to spear him. All right. Uh, I'll plot. I'll. Uh, I guess I'll just apply. I guess I'll just apply the th- uh, the second and third effect. Okay. You do. Hmm. She'll be taking extra damage since these guys is uh lowest. Uh, their lowest defending stat happens to be agility. Nice. Uh, no, let's see here. Do I want... I mean, I was about... Actually, I was about to say I could just let... I could just let, let the terrain just finish off that... Finish off that war... <laughs> that that one pirate that's in there. <laughs> but... But but, but, th- but then I remember it's effect damage, I think. So I gotta finish them off. A, yeah, yeah. It is effect... It is effect damage. They can't be defeated by effect damage. <laughs> Oh, wait, then again, he has actually bleed on him. He could be bled out. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. That's a good point. It's like, uh, yeah, yeah. The mo- the moment is basically like the moment they end your turn, he'll be you'll be bleeded out and die. <laughs> so honestly, so honestly, one way or another, he's gonna die. He's gonna go down. Yeah. Uh, you could you could you could attack Duke, I, I guess, or or I guess you could basically like attack basically these three guys over here. <laughs> oh, I guess that's before, true. Before I they have the chance, yeah, before they have the chance to do anything. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, I could do that. Also, also, oh right, ter- oh yes, ter- more terrain shenanigans. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Uh, you want to basically put terrain in between, basically like uh, you and this guy. Uh, yes. 
Uh, what would you like to put down? Uh, let's do rock. Uh, I guess rocky terrain would be fine. Okay. Dude, dude. <laughs> dude just putting rocks on top of that. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yes. Uh, okay, I know this is not gonna. I know this is not gonna. This, I know this probably can't really happen, but, uh, but it's funny nonetheless. Uh. Oh, oh, luckily I can. Luckily, he's actually in. Luckily, this middle boy is in range. I can get him. I can get them all. <laughs> oh, you're using the cow traps. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, I'm going to. I'm going to. Uh, hmm. I guess I guess uh do I guess inflate bleat I guess the second second and third effect. The fourth effect will come will come in will, will come in handy at some point at some point, but currently we're kind of in a cl in close spot. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't blame you. Good to do. But yeah, but yes, uh, second second and third effect. Also, foggy terrain. Okay, I'm trying to figure out how am I going to do this. Um, I guess uh, I'll do it this way. Um... Boo, boo, boo. Did that check out? Yeah, 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 that works out. Okay. Do do do. The pirate will go ahead and toss his, uh, his throwing axe, but now it will be basically shoved in a random direction. Okay, let me see. As the dude basically goes to chuck his axe, but then basically he kind of gets confused by the fog, and then he throws the axe behind him instead. I hit something! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, also, also, I guess one more thing since I uh, also, I guess one one more thing. Oh, since all right. I do have this, since this since this pirate is charmed, and I do have and I do kind of control and I do kind of somewhat somewhat suggest his actions. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Go go ahead. What do you uh, what do you want that pirate to do? Yes. My good, my my good, my good, my good friend, my good friend and compatriot. Compatriot. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I'm gonna have to. I'm afraid. I'm gonna have to request your request your aid. Okay. What do you need from me? <laughs> Uh, 
Well, the people who are well, the people who are attacking us is being very is being very rude. You think you can help 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 us take uh take care of them? All right. He moves up to basically this guy over here. Do the do. He takes his club. For some reason, I gave it this advantage, but it was a four anyway. The pirate yep. will go ahead and counter attack and return. <laughs> he misses. <laughs> uh, these fucking guys are just whiffing. Yes, yes, they are. Owie, 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 owie. Fools! Quickly! Do, do something! Ow! Oh, Lord, boss! Uh. 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 As this pirate goes ahead and tosses his throwing ass get, axe at, at his throwing ass? <laughs> <laughs> his throwing ass? Oh my god, he's throwing his ass! He basically he basically jumps at you ass first. <laughs> Just like from that one anime, KJ. <laughs> oh god. I have not actually watched that anime mostly because I honestly don't want to. I mean fair enough. Honestly, it's a, it's a it's a it's an anime that seems like it doesn't have really a deep message or anything. It's it's pretty much just seems like one of those fan service animes. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. I would not want to just do an impromptu kit, impromptu came impromptu impromptu back. Kane battles up. <laughs> sure, you, you can go ahead. You can go ahead and do that. Do the do. He's probably gonna die to the bleeding, anyways. <laughs> well, I'm not sure what his health is at. <laughs> then again, he was. Then again, he did into this turn on a terrain before. I, th I, I think you guys can kind of figure out that these pirates don't have that much health. <laughs> Yeah. At least, at least they're pretty much on, on par with the Dombros. Somewhat. Uh, but yes, Impromptu battles up with Kane. What do I roll? Uh, I'll let you roll your dexterity. We'll treat this as a parry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fucking, it's at this moment that Vizquez basically, like, takes his cane. But uh, dun 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 Basically, he hits it back at this pirate. It ricochets. It then hits, basically, this pirate. It ricochets off of this pirate. It's basically, uh, basically just hits this pirate over here. Oh, fuck! As it then basically hits this, this bumblefuck trio. Oh, <laughs> As basically Duke is just like eye twitching. <laughs> hmm. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to take drastic measures. As basically Duke basically goes marching towards Runar. <laughs> oh, fuck! Oh, my foot! <laughs> Then don't stomp your feet. I can't help it. I'm a I'm a hat stomper. Oh my god, a hat stomper! As he, oh, as he raises as he raises his blunderbuss to you. 
Surrender oh, now, or I'll blow your brains out. <laughs> He's going to go ahead and roll basically an intimidation. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. He was, he was really intimidated. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, if you get down on the ground, kid. And if you don't want to basically eat lead, Renar is very intimidated by this guy. I just imagine Renar just, just now just like has hands up on on the knee. Uh, go ahead, Nia. Oh, I, I, I was going to ask in a fit of fear. Can he use the rap bow to fire at this tree and get away? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> oh no! It's at this moment, Renar, in the fit of fear, basically shoots his bow at the tree. He then basically gets slunged into the tree. He basically lands in the tree. He is now stuck in the tree. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, my intention. Oh my god, the triple, uh, the double A's. <laughs> yep. Oh, baby, a triple. Do we do? Ah, oh, damn it. Hmm. Go over to the magician. Go over to the tree. Go over to the magician. Go over to the tree. He walks over to the tree. Oh, come on! <laughs> I'll let you know, kid, I'm a skilled lumberjack. As he oh, takes his that? gun and shoots it at the tree. <laughs> 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 Why didn't that work? <laughs> Renar blinks. Uh, looks around. Looks down it. Oh, no. And then uh, internal thought process. Don't question it. Just accept your blessings. This is probably <laughs> have to be like the funniest first encounter we've ever had in a series. Yep. Yeah. Uh, perfect. 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 Thing. Perfect intro for, for the for, for these pirates. <laughs> per perfect introduction to the Avalon, you guys. Just fucking shoots the tree. Why didn't that work? <laughs> do do do. Aaron basically sees that basically like uh, the, the skeletons having its like uh, fights to the death with basically this pirate. He he, he lets them have their bout. <laughs> oh god, he's trying to finish off the other two. <laughs> do do do. Yes. Also, before people basically, basically like, uh, basically correct me and everything, I'll let you know that sun, sun magic is unaffected by the foggy terrain. Just want to make that clear before I, before I have him cast the spell. Okay. Ooh, that's good to know. Do the do. He casts basically like a, basically like a mini sun at basically one of the pirates. Do do do, as he basically gets hit. Do do do, 
as he then goes ahead and blasts another mini sun at him, at the other pirates. He is then taken down. As we'll now go ahead and go to Renard's turn. But I guess before Renard does anything, let's have basically this pirate and Zombro finish their climactic battle. I did. I may or may not have put in one earbud, and I'm playing Guile's theme to this. <laughs> Guile's theme. <laughs> yep. Let's go. Punch him, Zombro! Let's go! And the pirate goes. The pirates attack Misks as the jo Zombro knocks him out. <laughs> the Zombro stands victorious. Is it this he moment that the bit, Zombro he knows? Bit... Go ahead. He, uh, he has a, a, avenged his brother. The Zombro notices that basically Runar is in trouble. He then basically starts moving. As we now go to Lunar in the tree. I have an idea of something I wanted to do, but I don't know if he can do it. <laughs> oh, what, what do you want him to do? It does involve the Zombro. My idea was, jump down the tree, run behind the Zombro, and proceed to use the rat bow. Uh, actually, more like, use the rat bow on the Zombro, drag him towards Duke for a bro fist of a century. <laughs> sure, I I'll allow you to do that. <laughs> All right. He shot with a bow. As basically the wrapped bow basically like uh, basically wraps around the Zombro. As you then as you then basically like pull the Zombro towards Duke, the Zombro holds his fist out. <laughs> as it then punches Duke in the face. Oh! Nice going, buddy. Duke then turns around, takes out his blunderbuss. And shoots uh -oh. the Zombro in response. The Zombro is then destroyed. <sighs> oh, you are going to get it for that. Hmm. Now, back to me trying to destroy this tree. <laughs> God damn it, why isn't this working? I'm As still proud of this Zombro. He did so much for one Zombro. Uh, hey, you took out two enemies. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he punched Duke. Yep. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, it is now Duke's turn. As Duke will go ahead and shoot the tree again. As basically Duke's repeat of shooting is actually seems to now be doing damage to the tree. As Runar now feels like that the tree is now starting to fall over. Which direction is it falling? It's falling backwards. Oh god, so it's falling to the cliff. He's not strong enough for that. Uh... My character will now use their He-Man strength to pull the tree back. I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pl oh, please. Oh, please. The only people who have He-Man strength is Paul. Actually, actually, I don't remember who actually has He-Man strength in you know, the saga games. 
The best I can think of. Uh, um, Robin? I guess that's Robin? true, Robin. Robin does have the key man strength. Uh, Ragnar? Ragnar, Ragnar. Uh, me, me, uh, one of Neo's guys from basically Arkham. All right. Ah, uh, yes, ah, uh, yes. And... Uh, he man told. Pro probably, like, the last one. Well, I guess technically, too. It's like, you have also Char, but he's a demon. I don't count and demons then, in this case. And then, and, you and then you have basically, like, uh, then you have, like, Dean. Uh, yes. Big old D. But not really big, but but still. <laughs> Strong boy G Dean. <laughs> the one punch Dean. Anyways. Yes, so two years falling. The best I can think of is for him to write himself and, and to hop himself onto this cliff. <laughs> Okay. Go ahead and roll Dex. Runar basically, Runar basically tries to basically like uh, jump onto the cliff, but his foot basically gets snagged on basically a vine. As he then bas as basically he's now basically on the edge of the cliff as he's currently getting dragged down by the tree, basically uh, slowly basically sliding down the cliff. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. As basically Duke st basically readies his blunderbuss and aims it towards you. The seagulls have defeated the badger. They have became victorious. <laughs> it's at this moment that Vasquez basically notices uh, Renal in trouble. Oh, oh my! It seems like my friend, my friend Renal, is in is in trouble. Hmm. Oh, there's only one way I can do I can do this. And it's by taking and it's by taking care of the good old Duke Duke Deep Devonshire. I do what I do what I do. Oh, my condolences. As he pulls out righteous just... Right. I don't know why I call this gun righteous justice. Righteous authority. No, that's its twin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, also got uh, right, righteous justice, uh, but, but you lost it inside the ship crash. <laughs> Ah, that's ah yes, that's gonna be a side quest. That's gonna be like a si side side quest as well. <laughs> side side quest. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, side side quest. B basically, find out where all the fucking shit went. <laughs> yeah. But yes. Fucking god, dude. Wow, that's just mid damage. Great job there, Chief. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, the. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Uh, as as in a dangerous terrain sh sh goes up underneath Vasquez, and then they switch places. I smell something toasty. Oh my god, that's me! Ah! <laughs> oh jeez, right back into the caltrops. <laughs> no, no, unfortunately, th those were already stepped step down by the other two. Ah. But do not worry, Renault, I am here now.
Are we tight? Yeah. Uh. Okay, what does that? What does actually just account as a sit and an assist because he's assisting the cut? Oh, he's assisting to cut that vine. That's a snap. That's snagging the fucking runar. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. You, you can say that. Okay, I can accept that. But yes, well, I guess ro so. I guess roll one of my that one of my daggers to cut to uh, to attempt to to attempt to cut cut the uh, vine. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, that's a sixteen. Yeah, you're good. You're in the clear. All righty. Uh, as a dagger comes out, comes out from com, comes out from from the sleeves. As he as he goes to tr uh, as he goes to throw. Thir Throw the knife, throw the knife to cut to cut the vine, to cut the vine that's, that's uh, snagging or an hour. Okay, then, my friend, friend, you should you should be fine now. Oh, you still need to, oh, you still need to, you still need to probably get out of there real quick. As as Renard is basically now fr uh, now free of the vine, mm -hmm. he now has freedom. He now has the freedom. Do do, okay. As we'll go ahead and do more. Do more. Blah, blah, blah. As it's now basically uh, Duke Devon Shire's next turn. Do, do, do. As he'll now basically start moving. Oh, oh, fuck! <laughs> you will not defeat me. As he takes out his blunderbuss. And he takes a shot at you. Oh no, he's taking a shot at me. Yes, I'm taking a shot at you. Oh no, he actually hit. Oh fuck, I just realized something. What? Earlier when you were attacking basically like uh, those trio of pirates, I, I actually forgot that you could double them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we both forgot this. <laughs> well, I mean, it's alright anyways. They, they've been taken out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, no problem. Do -do -do. It's, like no, it's like no home, no foul. They have already de they already did. <laughs> Well, not dead, but down. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, they they weren't basically posing much of a threat anyway. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I mean, to be honest, these pirates are, are always just like fun, just like for the funnies. <laughs> aside from a few, aside from a few who actually can hold their own, like on occasion. There, I mean, there's those odd cases when basically like random grunt enemies do spectacularly for some weird reason. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Rolo being basically like a great example of that. 
Mm -hmm. he's, pre he's pretty much a great example of it. Uh, uh, well, I guess that's a nine. I guess I miss. Oh, no. I'm a spit. Jokes up. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Turns out it was a... Turns out it was just a, it was turns out it was just pigeons. <laughs> as he pulls out as he, as he pulls out righteous righteous authority. <laughs> oh no, I've been hit. Pulls out gun. <laughs> <laughs> As he's been defeated. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. You know, or just let's go and slides down the cliff. My oh my! Well, you definitely got yourself stuck. Got just got yourself stuck in a very sticky situation there. Hey, Renard. Hey, Renard. Uh, that was something. You got sort of the remains of Zombro. I wasn't expecting this guy to do as well as he did. What? Well, well, I mean, well, I mean, the thing is, he always got that. Always expected, unexpected. <laughs> no kidding. Do do do. Hmm. Ah, it seems that basically you guys are can handle yourselves quite fine. I was worried about the fact that you guys wouldn't be capable of handling basically the problems that's been going on around here lately. Oh? Yes. Um, Optima has basically been plagued by several pirate pirate groups as of late. Well, oh my, that that is definitely not good. Uh, yeah. Um, it's honestly kind of been one of the biggest reasons why Optima has been having so many problems. Uh, some people basically think that, uh, think that some of the other, like, uh, kingdoms and everything basically brought outsiders here against basically the wishes of the other kingdoms. So, yeah, people are kind of basically getting up in arms and everything. Yeah, with all of the basically the arguing and fighting with basically all of the other like uh uh basically like uh countries and stuff. I I kinda just wanted to basically get away from it all and just kinda of have myself a nice little like uh relaxing getaway with some of my friends. But as I basically mentioned it, uh my friends didn't really want to stay around. They kinda just thought that my whole ho hobby of just doing research for my book was kind of boring. Oh. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. Also, I've noticed that basically, uh, you, Vasquez, you utilize arcane magic? Specifically trick magic? Well, of course! I, I Well, of course! I am a jester! I am a jester! I am, a jester. I, I am at the end of the day, you Known as the, known as a jester, jester where I'm from. 
A jester and a prince? That is an odd combination I have not seen before. Yeah, some people may some people would some people do think that. But uh, but honestly, but honestly, my but honestly, my prefer my little profession is that has not has not has not has not has, not, has definitely not sway, swayed me from my from, has definitely not sway, swayed me too too but too bad in in the in the thing of combat. Even though I just prefer usually making people laugh. Hmm. But yeah, uh, getting back to what we were talking about until we were interrupted by well, what was going on with this group. Uh, I actually thought about something to ask you guys. Uh, do you guys have, like, a map or something? Do they have a map? Yeah, you, you'd probably have a map. You'd probably check yourselves and basically see that. Yeah, basically you have a map that managed to survive, like, uh, the trip here. Uh yeah yes we do yes we do luck luckily luckily the luckily the map the map the we the maps we have actually survived. Hmm. As you then show him the map. All right. Um. All right. If you guys are basically from Avalon. Then you should basically be right here next to Soberus. Hmm. You must have traveled this direction, so you must be right here. As he basically circles a part of your map, and when you guys basically go to read it, you actually don't believe it. As he basically circled the area of where you believe to be the Lost Isles. <laughs> Holy shoot! Wait a, m oh my! Seems like seems like this is our destination. The Lost Isles. The Lost Isles. Oh, is that what they're calling Ultima these days? Well, that's what we've known this place as. Ah, uh, yeah. A lot of people tend to basically call, uh, basically call our uh, call basically Optima by many different names, mostly due to the fact that getting here is practically impossible by normal means. Uh, here, let me show you. As he kind of basically takes your map and he kind of gives like a rough sketch of basically the land of Optima. Basically, this is Optima, and right here is basically known as the outer layer of Optima. Basically, there's a current right here inside this area that basically pushes all water towards basically the island, making it so that's practically impossible for basically anything to kind of like uh, get basically off off of this basically general area. After that is the outer ring of Optima which basically pushes all of the water on a current backwards, making it so that basically normally boats can't really enter through here. Not to mention there's also basically a massive thick fog with inside this area. Honestly, with people kind of basically going missing and everything, honestly, what I think what happened was they just got caught in the current. It basically kind of like shove them in the opposite direction and they just end up going elsewhere. Huh. That is definitely something.
Yeah. Honestly, it's like, uh... I'm not supposed to basically say this, but since you're just a bunch of on honest, basically, people that are just basically looking for basically a cure for a poison and to fix you, fix basically your crests and everything, I can tell you this. There is actually technically a way off the island. It's just not a way that's basically like easily accessible to basically anyone. Oh. There's an underground tunnel system basically underneath the uh, underneath the island, which basically leads out into the open ocean, past basically like a a, ba a basically pa past basically the outer ring and stuff. Uh, some people inside basically Optima, especially the royals, think that the other royal families or somebody with inside the other kingdoms might have told outsiders about this uh, secret tunnel. And that's how basically some of these pirates been getting in. Because, honestly, this has been something that has never happened with inside, basically, uh, inside Optima's history. Usually, basically, the... the uh, basically, the outer ring and basically, like, uh, the upper ring basically keeps people out. Hmm. I guess when you put it like that, it is po it could it, I guess there could be a possibility that one of the others that, uh to told out told the outsiders, but but honestly, I'm not the one who I'm but honestly, I'm not one for pointing fingers. Let's tell pro proven proven uh, proven physically. Hmm. Honestly, I wouldn't want to believe that any of the royals or somebody inside Ultima would do something like this. I mean, I don't really see the benefit of basically te uh, basically telling anyone from any, like, pirates or anything about how to get into Ultima. That I can agree with. Oh, heavens, I actually just realized something. I forgot to basically what? ask you guys this. Uh, did you came here alone, or did you basically, uh, came here with any other people? Yeah, we came here with a si- but we came here with a sizable crew, mainly for protection reasons, and... Yeah. Uh, that kinda got split up by the Kraken. Pretty sure more of them are okay, but we don't know where they are. Huh. Well, I can help you look for them if you wish. Yeah, yeah, I would. I think we would like that. You know, I was about. You know, I was about to say, about to say, but, but I wouldn't. But, 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 but really, you know, I was about to say, I wouldn't, we really wouldn't probably want to disturb your, 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 your research, but then again, we, but then again, we have no knowledge of this place. Oh, that's a good point. You, you have no knowledge, so basically my research would be very helpful to you guys.
Yes. I mean, I was... I mean, I would be happy to basically assist you anyway. Honestly, the motto of basically, Le of basically the Leo Kingdom is to basically always help people that are in need. Well, that is di huh. well, that is diff well, that is definitely a mo the mo the most honorable and vat and valor and valor Va valor what valor valor custom. Don't worry. I'll help you get your friends back. And your crewmates or also friends. Um didn't, didn't want to basically just make assumptions that the people with you were your friends, but I would like to believe that they're your friends, because I like to believe that everyone has a friend. Yeah, it's alright, no worries. Uh, yeah. Uh. I don't know if you want to imagine that this, pi that this pirate, that this pirate that's currently charmed, just, just like, yay! Thank you, thank you. This <laughs> is like he's waving to the non-existent crowd. <laughs> Probably hasn't realized that his boss has been beaten up yet. <laughs> But yes. But yeah, before we continue, let's go ahead and basically uh, help people understand what the fuck was going on during that battle. <laughs> yes, especially especially with Vasquez. Yeah. Because he was doing a lot of shit. <laughs> he was doing a lot of wacky shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bubba So yeah, let's go ahead and go go into basically like uh let, let's first start with Runar and everything. Do 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 Ah yes, Runar. And, and we'll go ahead and basically uh Bubba go to basically Mr. Runar as we go ahead and see his personal skill. Huh? What the fuck? The personal skills, they look so much smaller now. Not as much text. Uh-huh. But yeah, um, do do. Yeah, so first we have basically Renard's personal skill being uh, the supported Prince of Dorado. Uh, whenever Renard successfully uses an assist action or a base of action, you may select an ally within 15 feet as, as a, within 15 feet to receive another action of your choice. If Renard rolled a critical success or failed failed this round or failed this round, select an additional ally and double the range of range of this effect. Runar's uh, support spells are always treated as support commands. If an ally critically hits this round, you you receive you receive advantage when using slash casting support commands. Just to kind of basically make it very clear that the fact that I put down casting is just like yes, this does work with Runar's spells as well. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So so I don't have any unnecessary questions. Did you Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what, whenever an enemy sla uh, receives slash uses a bonus or free action, Brunard uh, may use a rally command or non-spell support command 
on three squadron units or a single ally, regardless of where they might be on the battlefield as a free action. Um, if Runar or an ally, or an ally critically hits this round, this free action becomes a bonus action and is treated as a critical hit. Mm. Finally, also in case you people are wondering, the last effect here was actually Xander's idea. <laughs> Renault receives R uh, the R and R skill from the Masor variant and receives the massage command, applying one of these following effects until your target defeats an enemy. Critical hits, uh, critical hits, or if your target critically hits doubles the applied effect instead. Take minus five damage in de uh, with me uh, from melee attacks and deal plus five damage with melee attacks. Uh, take minus five damage uh, from range attacks and deal plus five damage with range attacks. Take minus five damage from spells and deal plus five damage with spells. He's Uh, yes, people. Uh, yes, people. I'm per. I, I'm pretty sure that I'm. I, I'm not. Uh, basically, the whole joke of basically like uh, fucking Neo's characters being good at massaging has not basically been downed on me. Sort of been becoming a recurring joke. But hey, let's be honest. Not. It's not the worst recurring thing to have you have on your characters. Yeah. I mean, it, it's never a bad thing to have, uh, to have a character who who knows how to make the others feel nice. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh my god, Renor is now multi-classing. <laughs> yeah, secretly oh, a multi not, not, well, well, not really multi-classing, multi-variants? Yeah, that would that would be the thing. He's mo he's multi-varianting. But yeah, do do do. We then basically have Runar's do do do. A uh, personal trait. Originally, I was going to make this the name of his personal skill, but then I kind of realized his personal skill had very little to basically do with the name of the a name of the personal skill, so I made it a personal trait instead. <laughs> uh, Originally, it was the Prince of Fantasy Costco. Then I just made it into Fantasy Costco. <laughs> <laughs> uh, since uh, since the Lafay family owns Fantasy Costco, Runar knows how to talk with merchants and traders, allowing members of his squad 50% off from all retailers he successfully uses the barter skill on. <laughs> and yes, Runar does have a barter skill. Oop. That's some good bartering right there. Uh, when, uh, when it, uh, when, in... God damn it, wombat chan, you're supposed to be my proof leader, but you're not picking up stuff like that, <laughs> like this. <laughs> uh, when an ally is buying from your shop or your inventory, uh, they receive a gold card after after their third purchase and a free consumable exclamation point. <laughs> you buy one, you get one free. But yeah, uh, basically, uh, good old uh, Runar, his class is. The Antiquarian. He's basically here to basically increase his, increase basically his, uh, his allies' inventories, and to basically play around with consumables, relics, artifacts alike. I know it says item, but it's like I only decided like very recently that I wanted to change item to artifact. So just give me a moment to correct that in like by, by the next session. Yep. Yes. And then we have basically Curious Purchase. 
uh, from basically the variants known as Strange Oddities. Allow an ally to purchase any items, relics, consumables uh, from your own inventory at the pro at at the no, no, at the complete at the pro fuck at the price of complete. God damn it, Wombat Chan! I fucking corrected. Uh, Wombat Chan, were you just skidding? He potentially was. Instead of uh, instead of receive uh, instead of receiving gold outright, the user receives a gold card. Each ally can only make one purchase outside of each encounter. Lovely job, Lane. Yes, bother that. Yeah, it's like Minara also kind of has himself basically some neat little tools. Do do do. It's like you saw the magic conch, you saw the hand axe, you had basically the wrapped bow. I also gave him some like healing flasks, uh, stamina flasks, and basically mana flasks. Uh, he had basically these like elixirs as well. Do do. Neo's character is Doradish, so basically he's going to be doing a lot of supporting work. Yes, yeah, so I decided to play a little full support this round. And, and also the reason because Neo be believes that his luck's better when he's basically a support. I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I'm going to say something, because basically uh, Neo basically picked the Aquarian, his character has, like, an avoid limit of 10 currently, so he can do a lot of dodging. <laughs> yep. And down here, uh, basically it's like, uh, he has basically things like get down. Uh, basically like a command that he gets from his class, as well as protect me. <laughs> Something he used during the encounter. <laughs> it, it's basically like, uh, th this battle wasn't too difficult, so I, I don't think that there was any moment where basically like Neo needed to use get down. Yeah. And then we saw basically Neo use the Unholy Grimoire. So, yeah, he basically managed to summon his Zombros and everything. Doo -doo -doo. Also, apparently, this tome, uh, also, apparently, this Grimoire allows him to speak with the dead. <laughs> yeah. For a few Doo -doo -doo. minutes. Yeah, for a few minutes. Doo -doo -doo. Also, he had something that he didn't use during this this encounter, that being basically the Necklace of Elements. Uh, since, since these guys weren't using any spells, there were no reason for him to use this. Uh, that will change inside the next encounter. You do. Oh. But yeah. Do you it, this was basically like a good, uh, this was basically like a good old Renar. Doo -doo. Also, basically, like in terms of like other menial uh, menial things, it's basically like uh, Renar is not going to basically have that many like uh, weapons, basically like or spells on his hand, but he's going to have like a lot of consumables, items, and relics. So basically, it kind of makes it so that Neo can kind of like. Utilize basically the consumables, the items, and the relics to their full capabilities. <laughs> because m mostly it's basically like with other characters, it's like they they'll probably only be capable of having like uh, two to maybe three relics inside their inventory. But with him being an antiquarian, he gets to use a lot more of them. <laughs> Yeah, 
and for basically elemental affinities uh, with Neo kind of going with the support route, he basically picked flower, mystic, water, earth, and plant. Good dude. Yeah. Now let's go up to Vasquez. Do -do -do. And hold on to your hats, bo boys and girls. This is going to be a whopper. Yeah, in full wild thing. Oh yeah, also something I forgot to point out. If you guys actually do notice, um, I actually now put down on basically the sheets itself, basically like... Uh, uh, basically the value that each of the thresholds basically divide them by and now basically each of like uh, the threshold basically each of the characters DRs can now have their individual thresholds oh yes nice yeah it's basically like I've done it in a pretty simple way it's basically like uh, when it comes down to it it's like each of the classes basically affect the individual DRs so yeah basically it's like uh so right here, Drago, basically this, like, uh, lineup right here are basically, like, how, like, uh, how basically the DRs of basically, like, uh, the Trickster class basically goes. And the same thing with the Antiquarian. Doo -doo -doo. That's kind of like how their D uh, DR, like, uh, basically loadout is. With basically them having, uh, basically, light MR, um, them having a high resistance to basically ranged attacks, them having medium to basically, like, uh, both both critical and basically like uh, spells, and then finally them having basically like a high resistance to effect damage. Wow. Uh, so, okay. So so that you so okay. So the you uh, effect damage. Basically, it's like a. It, it's basically like I kind of treat basically it as kind of like basically effect damage as well as residual damage, like. Basically, I guess kind of for like an example, any splash damage that basically you take from basically area attacks and everything, I I'll kind of like count that as well. <laughs> uh, I guess in this, in the, I guess in that case, since I was confused on this, since I was a little bit confused on this, uh, what is the thing for 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 area for? For effect resist. Oh, um, he's heavy. Um, he's a heavy. No, no, no. And, what, what, what? Oh, oh, what's that? Sorry, sorry. Yeah, what's um, that? I, I'm using I'm using con. The, the answer is con. Ah, con. I see. Okay. Oh, he has an eight con. Okay, that ain't that bad. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Yeah. Do -do. But yeah. Um. So yeah, now go going up, we have basically his personal personal skill, the Phantom Gesture of Hy of Hydras. Vasquez's weapons and spells with multi-choice effects are always treated as daggers for any of uh, Vasquez's trickster class skills, tech skills, or commands. Whenever Vasquez doubles an enemy with a weapon or spell with a multi-choice effect, Vasquez may choose to attack with a different weapon or spell and apl uh, apply a different effect of said weapon or spell or a spell or attack a, bit, a different enemy and attack rule cannot miss. So yeah, basically it's like a, with this first part part of the personal skill, it's like I, I'm explaining basically his a little bit more because I feel like that Runars was very simple. <laughs> mm -hmm. Didn't really need much explaining, but yeah, it's, a, it's like with basically this, this kind of allows basically like uh, Drago to play a little bit of a mix-up game. Like, it's basically, like, you can decide to basically, like, uh, choose to attack with a different weapon. He could basically choose to, like, uh, uh, he could basically choose to basically apply a different effect to basically the weapon that he's currently using. Or you can just choose to attack a different person immediately. Mm-hmm. 
and, and then if he basically chooses to attack a different enemy, it basically does have the added on effect of like he, the attack roll is not going to fail. <laughs> so yeah. even if even if Drago basically like rolls like uh, an eight or a nine or something, it's still going to hit. <laughs> Because at that point, it will only come down if the person can dodge it or not. Yeah. yeah. Which, which, to be honest, if they can't dodge an eight, eight or a nine, then something's wrong with them. I think their legs are broken. I mean, there's also the factor that basically it's like Vasquez is basically like a dagger user, and, dagger ten, and daggers tend to be the most accurate weapons in the game. Mm. Yeah. Fair enough. But yes. Yeah. All of Vasque uh, Vasquez's non-damaging arcane spells can be used as evasive actions. If you do, Vasquez receives one trick counter. If Vasquez rolls higher than, than his attacker's roll, receive three tra trick counters instead. Vasquez always starts an encounter with three trick counters and can spend the trick counter to use a defensive or evasive action instead of reducing the proper limit instead. This one's rather simple. It basically kind of allows basically like uh, Drago to be very fancy with basically like uh, with how he wants to basically avoid attacks and everything. Kind of and like, what's, utilize... kind of like what happened with it. Kind of like what happened with the, with a uh, flock of ravens and the uh, and the uh, other one. Round of applause. Mm -hmm. And then he had like one more spell, that being featherfy, which honestly it's not supposed to really be used for basically an evasive action. I guess you could maybe role play it in a way, but this is kind of just for the just in case like factor. If you end up like basically like fucking up the battlefield too badly, because uh, because it's like. I, I am going to confirm something. It's like, when it comes down to the refrain spaces, it's like, they they affect both parties. It's like, it, your allies aren't immune to them. It's like, but it's like with the Fetterfy and everything, it's like, you can basically make it so that, like, uh, your your allies will at least basically be, be immune to basically, like, some of the terrain you can make. Yes. Oh, I would have to be careful which to. Uh, though I would have to be careful and and uh, and mostly and probably mostly have the battlefield to be turned into dangerous and rough terrain. I might also add rocky terrain since you were using rocky terrain a lot. <laughs> I mean, come on! I mean, come on! Now the rocky terrain was actually quite funny in some instances. <laughs> I, I thought it was a funny way to utilize it. Yeah, it's like, uh, it basically a like, nice really. <laughs> yeah, it's like Vasquez, him being from Hydras and everything, uh, he can basically move through basically like terrain unaffected and he's also unaffected by it. Um, so yeah, it's basically like all, all this stuff is basically like all this terrain spaces and everything, they're not going to be doing anything to Drago's character. Yeah. So yeah. So when it comes to terrain spaces, I'm fi I'm perfectly fine. <laughs> it's yeah, the others that he, I'm going to have to worry about. Yeah, and he's basically like uh, deals. Da he basically like uh, deals damage uh, plus five damage when basically like when when both you and and your enemy are basically battling within the terrain space. It's like so basically this kind of gives benefit for basically like uh, Drago kind of like picking on people they basically like put inside terrain. <laughs> Kind of just allowing him to kind of just fuck around. And then, yeah, then, then there's basically, like, uh, the whole swap places thing. Something that he was using a lot during the battle. But, yeah. We then get to basically the final, like, part of his personal skill. Um, whenever Vasquez uses a spell or attack with... Uh, a, a spell attack with a weapon uh, that would miss or fail... 
Vasquez can spend one trick counter to take that action back, allowing him to attack with a gun weapon or cast a trick spell instead. Then, if uh, Vasquez's roll was doubled, or more, uh, the roll of his previous action, said previous action will now be considered successful since it was all according to Vasquez's plan from the beginning. Oh boy. That last that 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 last that last that last the that last the roll that last roll was so fucking hilarious. <laughs> uh, just basically like throw, throwing basically the knife and then just going, I got a gun! <laughs> Critical hit. <laughs> Just, 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 just like, just like, throws a knife. Turns out the knife turns. The, kni the knife turns into pigeons, blo blocking the view of Duke. <laughs> then gun. <laughs> yeah. Then, then we have basically a terrain trickery, which I don't think you used during this battle. I mean, I've been create. I mean, I did. I mean, I did create the these terrains. <laughs> because I did. Because I do. Because I did say cr create some terrains since I was attacking people at range. <laughs> oh no no! I was. Th oh no no! I was talking about the second effect. Oh. Oh no! I haven't done that. <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, you were using the first effect. It's like, uh, whenever Vasquez attacks an enemy, you can create, uh, any terrain space in, uh, in the spaces in between him and his target. Whenever Vasquez passes over a terrain space, Vasquez can transform that terrain into in any other terrain. Yeah, he did that once. I don't remember him doing it. Uh, I remember the first effect. Uh, there was a pirate standing here. Uh, well, actually, I think it was this pirate here, and he was over here. Yeah, I was... Yeah. I was talking. I was talking about specifically the second effect. Oh, okay. The second effect. No, I don't think he did that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, basically, it's like Vasquez is going to be unaffected by terrain anything anyway. So why not just giving an ability that can just even uh, that can just allow him to just go. Hmm. Okay. So we have rocks in the ground. Now it's fire. <laughs> Yeah. Do the do. I guess now I'm thinking. Oh, look at this. This is also pretty good damage damage control. Just in case if there's like too too much, too too much mayhem. Too much of mayhem. Yeah, it, it's basically like if things start basically getting out of control, you can basically just start like uh, running over your own terrain and basically like turn it into something else. <laughs> Yeah. Do the do. Yeah, because there are basically like some terrains that do actually have positive effects and everything. Do the do. But yeah, um, do the do. So yeah, it's basically like Drago's character basically gives him a lot of mix-up opportunities and everything, and allow allows him to basically like uh, get, give him basically like a different wacky ways to basically like uh, basically like approach a combat scenario. Which <laughs> I can tell that you were having a lot of fun. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Do do. Yeah, and as I basically mentioned, uh, basically good old, like, uh, Drago was a trickster, because, like, it's basically like I said, like, during basically, like, uh, a bit, it, it's basically like he kind of did want to play a trickster character, and we did have basically a class, like, called the trickster, so basically, like, uh, basically recommending a class for basically Drago was very easy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like basically he has Joker's traits. 
Uh, the user may increase the range of any daggers by 25 feet or the area of any daggers by two whenever you're about to attack an enemy with a dagger. Uh, whenever you atta attack with a weapon or spell with a multi-choice effect, you may select to apply an additional effect. He was doing that a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. I didn't utilize the first first effect because honestly, because honestly, again, we were in that look, we, we were in a little bit of an enclosed space, so so range wasn't really, so range and so range wasn't really a problem. Yeah, I, I I guess the only thing you could have probably done was maybe like increase the area of the cow drops, but there there was probably really not not much of a point to that. Uh, and then basically, fr and then basically, like uh, from the mix-up variant, uh, we have basically weapon trickery. Whenever you attack with a non-multi-choice of uh, non-non-multi-choice effect weapon or spell, you may apply a an effect from a multi-choice effect, effect dagger in your inventory to said weapon or spell. Uh, currently, he has no weapons that don't have a multi-choice effect, so there was no way he could basically use this effect. They'll probably be like maybe they'll probably be like a spell. They'll probably be like a spell or weapon or two. But, but, but as of right now, this, but as of right now, uh, this this is not going to be used. But this will pretty much not be used as of right now. But yeah, it's like once he does, it will still it will basically give him like again more basically like mix up opportunity. <laughs> Uh, it, it's basically like uh, he, he could basically like take out a gun and then bam, cow drops. I'm an angel. Well, actually, no. I'm a jester with a shotgun. Yeah. I already talked about the coin earlier, so I'm not going to go into it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's like, I'm gonna get myself some iced tea. All right, do do do. Um, do do. Yeah, it's like uh, we then have basically the pearl of hindsight. Yeah. Once per encounter, if you were to critically fail or end your turn, uh, with you not being able to do anything, you receive a bonus action. If the user tries to be cheeky with this item, it will break. <laughs> RP effect. Looking into this pearl will let you understand the mistakes that you have made in your life. Basically, slow will tell you what you did wrong recently. Yeah, yes, as an example, you're not supposed to steal from the cookie jar. <laughs> uh. Then we have the resistance mirror. You do. Uh, the, uh, use this mirror to reflect an incoming attacker spell that you are resistant to back at an enemy. Uh, you may uh, you may spend an extra twenty stamina to roll with advantage. Unfortunately, uh, basically Vasquez is not resistant to gun. Not with that attitude. Anyways. Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna basically reveal anything on Aaron yet. I'm I'm gonna keep basically his stuff a secret. Aaron is Aaron. Dulahan. Dulahan. Yeah. It's like um yeah, the only other like uh general things to basically mention about Vasquez is the factor of uh, he's basically like a vapor, spirit, lightning, earth, and like a uh, metal magic user. Uh, <laughs> basically, it's like uh, he, he has like four weapons, four spells, uh, eight consumables, two relics, two, uh, two like artifacts and like accessories that you can utilize. Um, he has a fairly decent amount of basically like skill caps. Doo -doo -doo. He has some good mana, some good like uh, stamina, so that's great. Mm. Yes. 
Yeah. Good dude. So yeah, it's basically like Vasquez. He has basically like uh, chicken wings. Chicken wings with the mecha wings. Uh, e even though that basically like uh, that basically like a uh, watcher isn't with us, so I'll, I'll go ahead and basically show his character stuff anyway. Mhm. Mm yeah. Um. Basically, we have the cackling doctor of the lands. <laughs> Uh, Bane's status spells always deal plus 5 damage against enemies that are already inflicted with the status effect that said status spell inflicts. And if, if Bane is inflicted with the same status effect, Bane can cast the same spell or a spell that inflicts the same status effect at a second target. Critical hits with status, of, uh, with status spells inflict the spell status effect in the free by free area. Uh, Bane can spend any basic action, basically like, uh, basically like say what that is, basically what, what it refers to basic action is the fact that he can use his standard movement, assist, or quick action when basically like, uh, when basically using this ability. Uh, to cure a status effect from an enemy or ally within 15 feet. What? Why would you cure, cure an enemy of a status effect? What? <laughs> That's unheard of. If removed from an enemy, inflicts 10 damage to that enemy. If removed from an ally, restore 10 health to that ally. Back. If an um if an enemy that was cured of a status effect this round misses an attack, you may cast a spell at them as a free action. If an ally that was cured of a status effect this round misses an attack, they receive a free action afterwards. So yeah, basically this kind of makes it so that like, uh, that basically like, if basically if Watcher's character wants to, he can basically like inflict status effects into his like, uh, his enemies in a like a wide range, and then he could actually go up cure them of those status effects, and then if basically if like any of his cured enemies basically like uh, start missing attacks, he can then start casting spells at them. This is also useful in the way of, like, in the fact that if it basically if, like, any enemies cure their enemy allies of status effects and then they miss attacks, it's like, uh, yeah, that just gives basically him more value. But it's kind of like also that the fact that I kind of wanted to make it so that basically that Watcher doesn't have to be so reliant on basically enemies curing their own status effects. So I basically made it so that he can actually do it himself. <laughs> mm-hmm. Also, also, if you really think about, also if you really think about, it, this is actually this actually can be a double. This can also be a little bit of a good, a little bit of a boot, a little bit of a uh, actually a good thing because you because some some people. Uh, not gonna say every, not gonna say, not gonna say everyone, but some, but some, but some of these folks. Actually, do kind of benefit from being from having a status effect. So honestly, yeah. this, so honestly, this is actually pretty good. Removes yeah. a threat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, honest, honestly, you, you guys would probably wish to have something like this inside, basically like Fior. <laughs> Spoiler alert: you might get something like this in Fior. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, at the start of every round, uh, Vane can cast a delayed spell while no one is looking. <laughs> a delayed spell. spell? Yes, a delayed spell while no one is looking on any empty space on the battlefield can activate it at any time or whenever an enemy moves on the selected space or adjacent to the selected space. If Vane is inflicted with a status effect at the start of the round, uh, Vane can cast two additional delayed spells. Oh my. Oh, it's a spell suspension. Yeah, actually, yeah, that's actually the perfect way to explain it. <laughs>
Yeah. Basically, this final part was actually brought on by basically a joke that basically me, Draco, and, like, Watcher were basically, like, making, like, behind the scenes and everything. I think a lot of jokes. Um, I'll basically give the rest of the context of the joke immediately. Um... <laughs> 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 Conjure ants in your pants. Conjure ants in the pants of an enemy, inflicting infestation to your target's ass. Your enemy life sucks a little bit more now, because they have ants in their pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. I w God, I wish Watcher was actually around now. This would have been so funny if he just inflicted ants in his pants. Ants in his Ants in your pants on Duke. Yeah, this would have been so funny. Uh, do do. Yeah. Um. We have basically like uh, we have basically like uh, the legendary poison spell that being Black Plague. This spell inflicts Black Plague to enemies currently suffering from a status effect. Any enemies not suffering from a status effect take 5 damage instead. If the user of this spell is inflicted with a status effect, you may double the might of any other status spell inside your inventory. Um, people will probably be asking, what does Black Plague do? That is actually quite simple. It doubles the effect of, po of the poison status effect. Hmm. Yeah, it's rather simple. It's it's basically one of the more like simple advanced ass effects, so yeah. Doo -doo -doo. We then basically get to poison ivy. This spell inflicts rooted to all enemies if they manage to if they manage to free themselves from the roots. Uh, they are inflicted with poison afterwards. Enemies that fail a movement round while rooted inflict 10 damage to them. So yeah, this is kind of just supposed to be a double fuck you spell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just like, you get fucking like poison ivy wrapped around basically your legs. It's like, oh fuck, we need to cut this off. Cut off the roots. Now you're poisoned. <laughs> And it's probably itchy as hell, too. Yeah. That, that was kind of, like, something I was thinking about when basically, like, uh... They basically, like, making his, like, things. Then there's basically, like, uh, the plant spell... Spell Leet Seed. Yeah. No. Th this spell inflicts Seeded. And yes, this is not an advanced status effect. This is actually an all-new status effect, Seeded. This spell inflicts Seeded to all enemies. Seeded enemies are drained of 5 health at the end of end of their turn. If a Seeded enemy takes damage from a poison spell, they take 4 damage, and are now treated if they're inflicted with poison as well. Interesting. So, so yeah, it, it pretty much makes it so that Seeded is technically the only stats effect that can actually make it so that an enemy can suffer from two stats effects at the same time. Again. I mean, add, yeah, add, add this to basically Black Plague. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Dale. Oh, I, I was just going to say, Hey, imagine putting ink under poison ivy. RP effect. The target is now itchy as hell. <laughs> yeah. Now there's... And then here comes basically a poison spell. Uh, it's about the same new poison spell, but honestly all the spells that I've shown so far like are new spells anyway. <laughs> yeah, so new kind of comes kind of becomes redundant. Yeah, it's like we then have basically fever. 
this spell inflicts burning to enemy. What? A poison spell that doesn't inflict poison? But yes, this spell inflicts burning to enemies, and your target takes plus 5 damage from fire spells and effect damage for the rest of the round. If an enemy would be cured or healed, uh, your target, inflict burning or poison to them afterwards. Then we have the next poison spell, Cardiac Arrest. <laughs> This spell inflicts paralysis to enemies, and your target takes plus 5 damage from lightning spells and suffer disadvantage with quick actions for the rest of the round. If an enemy would cure or heal your target, inflict paralysis or poison to them afterwards. Yeah, and I've always loved status effect shenanigans. I wish I'd try this sometime, sometime for one of our series, or something similar. Yeah. Do do. Oh fuck. I showed his uh, thing again. Do do. And then here's basically another thing. Honestly, I thought that Watcher would love this. <laughs> we have time for a checkup. Instead of using a proper movement during his turn, uh, during his turn, Vane can move adjacent to any ally with a status effect. Whenever Vane uses Colorizing iron on an ally, they receive plus four in any DR. Or uses it on, on an enemy, inflict minus four to any DR for the rest of the round. So yeah, now now like any time he now basically uses his red hot iron rod on you guys. <laughs> You, you guys will get a benefit. More of a benefit now. You just have to basically mind the fact that you're getting uh, getting basically like a hot iron rod shoved into your ass. I'm not joking. <laughs> yes. And then we get to basically like, uh, basically his class, that being the Plague Doctor. <laughs> with basically their first skill being Patient Zero. Which honestly might be one of my favorite names of a skill, like, ever. It just sounds pretty cool, Patient Zero. And also it kind of fits with basically the whole, like, doctor and basically ailment theme and everything with the class. I actually really love it. <laughs> <sighs> Whenever you cast a status, effect, uh, status spell on an enemy, you may select what status effect you want to inflict, uh, inflict from a list down below instead of inflicted listed status effects. If the user cast a status spell on an enemy already inflicted with a status effect, you are inflicted with a status effect. Or if you, you are inflicted with a status effect, inflict the selected status effect or the status effect they slash you are inflicted with to all enemies within 15 feet of your target. Then we have basically a passive down here basically called the Plague Mask. The user status effect spells receive plus one crit and plus and plus three hit. Uh, when inflicted with uh, when inflicted with a status effect, regardless if the status effect does anything to the user. So yeah, um, when it comes down to basically like this class, basically like Watcher can select what immunities he wants his character to have. So it kind of makes it so that like, uh, uh, makes it so that basically his character can kind of just like uh, do, a uh, bit basically like it can make it so that he's inflicted with poison. The poison's not doing anything to him, but basically he gets the benefit from the plays mask regardless if the poison's killing him or not. Oh no, Drago died. Oh no.
No, Drago. No. I am assuming net problems on his end. Oh, fuck. Yep, net problems on his end. Also, here's that status effects list. Do loot. Poison, infected, doom, panic, and isolation. I really hope doom doesn't work as it does in, 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 in a certain game that I play. It doesn't. Okay, good. Because in that game, it's a tight aimer that counts down, and once it hits zero, you die. Why would I make something that's an insta kill? <laughs> you wouldn't. If I feel like I gave something like that to you guys, I'll spam it like crazy. <laughs> And then there's cauterizing iron. The user uses uh, use a red hot iron rod to cure themselves or an ally of bleeding, infestation, or infection as an assist action. Ooh. You may attack an enemy with the red hot iron rod as a quick action, inflicting burning and inflict ten damage. So much status. I love it. I mean, yeah, it's like the entire theme of basically like uh, the Plague Doctor is just basically like custom, basically status effect spells, being able to inflict a mass amount of status effects, and you gain benefits if you yourself are even afflicted with a status effect. <laughs> status effects for everyone. <laughs> It's like, personally, it's like if I have to kind of, like, say which one. Uh, it's basically like, if I have to say which, like, uh, one of my classes or my favorite that I've made, I, honestly, Plague Doctor would probably be up there. <laughs> oh, fuck. Huh? Fuck, my cup of iced tea spilled. Oh, no. Fuck, some of it got on my keyboard. Uh-oh. Ah, oh, please don't fuck up my keyboard. Ah, fucking damn it. Ah. Can, can you pause the recording real quick? Okay, pausing.
up. My keyboard seems like it's it's fine. All right, that's good to hear. I've made that. I've ended it up. I have a uh, spilled uh, icy on my past keyboard as well. It didn't short it, even though it took a bit for me to, to get any out, but it did make the key stick a little, so that, that might end up happening, but I'm pretty sure if you got it out early, you won't have many problems. If any at all. Yeah, I'd rather deal with sticky keys than, like, uh, have no keyboard. Yeah. I had to already go for that for basically like a week, and it was fucking torture. Hey. You try basically doing anything on a computer without access to a keyboard. Well, I don't want to dream of it. <laughs> okay, go, go ahead and basically unpause. Alright, we back. Okay. So... Yeah, um, do the do. Yeah, if you, if you thought that you couldn't have basically enough status effects after that, do the do. I also took the courtesy of giving basically, oh my god, a critical success. <laughs> yes. Uh, Watcher also has himself basically a blight book. Conjure mold into the eyes of, a, of an attacking enemy, causing them, them to miss you. If another enemy is adjacent to your target, their attack will hit them instead. Then there's basically, like, Book of Knowledge. Which is a quick action. It costs 30 mana. Once per encounter, the user can capture the knowledge of a spell into this book. Canceling out the spell, allowing the user to cast the spell as a bonus action once. Then the knowledge of the spell is removed from the book. RP effect. A book you have read over a dozen times about a certain subject giving you intelligence of what of what you do but lacking real world wisdom to know how to do it <laughs> then we have probably the biggest reason why why I'm kind of secretly kind of upset that basically like Watcher wasn't here, but I, I'm I'm not gonna be too bent out of shape with it. Fake gold coins. <laughs> Bribe an enemy with these fake gold coins, turning them into a squadron unit for your party until they figure out that the gold your gold coins you're paying them with are fake. RP effect. A giant bag of over 10,000 10, worth of fake coins. To the, un to the untrained merchant, this can be, be used to fool a person into a bad trade. But yeah, do the do. Yeah, this is me basically just uh, showing all of the stuff that's basically like uh, 
uh, yeah, sh showing all the stuff that we basically have got gotten uh, that we got here. Lots mm -hmm. of useful stuff, and I'd say lots of money, but that's not money. Hey, who knows? Maybe if you f find a merchant who will fall for this, you guys can basically ma make something. I don't know what, but something. But yeah, it, it, it's it's basically like um, I hope that this series will basically be like a uh, nice series for us to do, um, and I hope that basically like a lot of the stuff that I kind of have planned that's coming down the pipeline will also be fun. Um, it's like I said before, I I kind of have a lot to owe to basically like uh, the saga series of games because they, they basically probably have helped me kind of like become a better GM more than any other series, so I'm probably, like, the most grateful as well as basically, like, uh, I honestly kind of love these series down to my very heart, because they're very near and dear to me. Yeah. As for basically other stuff that I kind of have planned and stuff, uh, well, I'm going to be 100% honest. It's like the next two series I'm going to probably focus on is probably like uh, finally like redoing JoJo. <laughs> because, okay, when we did basically like the JoJo RP inside the first iteration of the Higher Council, I honestly didn't thought it was that bad of an RP. I think that the only problem was that the fact that it's like... I'm the only, it's basically only two people inside the higher council really watch JoJo. <laughs> that yeah. being basically me and Monkey. Yeah, it's it's like other than, other than basically maybe like a few, few like minor things. It's like honestly that series wasn't bad. It's just that I kind of now want to basically like uh, focus on doing a JoJo RP again uh, with basically kind of the new updated like uh, stuff and me kind of like uh, having a much better systems in mind. It's like I kind of thought of a way of how I can actually do basically a JoJo RP. Do do do. Yeah. And then there's basically going to be the beast of me basically just going, fuck it, hitting the big old reboot button on the entire like, fucking my hero universe. Mm -hmm. Uh. Do do the fact that basically like Drago's not here and there's only like 19 minutes left in the se inside the session, I I, I feel like it I I feel like that's finally time for basically us to finally like bury this dead horse that we've been beating to rigor mortis for probably like the past four years. Oh well, it's been well past rigor mortis at this point. It's just ground beef. Yeah, actually, I guess three years is more appropriate. Yep. Actually, no, I think it has been four years. Actually, now that I think about it. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure that basically, like, I'm pretty sure that the my, that the old My Hero RP actually ended somewhere, like, somewhere in November. So, yeah, it's actually getting close to four years for, for basically, like, uh, since that RP was basically put down like old Yeller. Yep. Yeah. And in case of people aren't basically aware, um, you know, uh, let, let's get, let, let's get out of Avalon Saga. This is not the appropriate RP to talk about this. Uh, let, let's go to the My Hero RP. At least, at least it will basically be fitting with the topic. Yep.
do do do. I'll just go ahead and enter. Do do do. I am already there. Great. But yeah, um, for those that are not aware, um, before we basically did uh, this nice, uh, uh, basically like the, the first like My Hero series, uh, the, the, uh, basically like uh, the My Hero series were basically like uh, our good old friends, basically like a watcher and, and like basically like uh, and, and like. Uh, and basically Drago and stuff. There there was a My Hero series that did came before that one. Yes, there was. Yeah. That it was the original My Hero series, and that one was a fucking train wreck. Yeah. Unbalanced in a lot of ways and also, I think there might have been one too many people participating. I don't think that the many the amount of people would. I, I think we can be quite frank here, Neo. We we don't have to basically like be lie or basically say face. The biggest problem with that series was the fact that the players were being overly toxic towards each other. Yeah, treating it more like a competition to be the strongest than anything else. Basically, it was like RPing with a bunch of season two endeavors. Yeah, it honestly, honestly, it was basically the equivalent of basically putting a bunch of like Vegetas in the room <laughs> and expecting them to work together. Yeah. Yeah, it's like that original series. It, it it was a fucking train wreck. It's like... Uh, honestly, I could basically overlook how basically... How, like... Uh, how basically, like, unbalanced the system was. It's like... And also overwork... Ba overlook how basically broken, basically, like, the player's quirks were when you really thought about it. But, yeah, it's like... When it basically came down to it, it was just the overwhelming, basically, toxicity, basically, between the other players, and them kind of treating this as, like, a massive dick measuring contest. Yeah. As well as, basically, like, a lot of them kind of getting upset or basically, like, getting angry when, basically, things weren't going their way. <laughs> And then basically, like, I I'm basically, like, fine with Monkey. Me and Monkey are basically on good terms. And he basically even admits to him it's, it is himself. And I don't feel bad for basically mentioning this. And he, and he won't basically hold it against me either. But, yeah. Basically, at that point, basically, like, Monkey was having a giant murder boner. <laughs> and when you're basically playing basically a character, like, basically an RP of where you're basically children like teenagers and your goal is to basically be a hero you can't really have a character who basically like default like way to solve a problem or take down the villain is to murder the shit out of them <laughs> or to kill them with no remorse <laughs> yeah <laughs> there were a lot of problems it's like Basically, I'll give you a couple of scenarios. A person that basically Monkey, basic, a Monkey's character suspected that it, it was not, there was no proof that this was the case, 
to be a villain, or at least basically have bad intentions at the worst, his best idea to basically stop them when they were basically boarding a bus full of other people was to fucking blow up the bus. <laughs> what is wrong with this picture here? <laughs> you don't even need to ask that question. And then there was the factor of later inside the RP of where basically like uh, where some of the player characters, it's like they were outside of basically a bank. But then they were like, oh, wait, now that I think about it, if all of them are basically inside that bank, let's just blow up the fucking building and kill them. <laughs> it's at that moment I had to basically have like one of the NPCs go, wait, 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 there could be innocent civilians in there. <laughs> Yeah. Why is your guys' first response is to blow up the fucking building? <laughs> you can't... Uh, really, not every villain is going to uh, be that one that can survive getting a building dropped on them and be unconscious at the end of it. Also, this is the world of quirks and everything. Honestly, I, I could probably stretch my imagination to say... Yeah, they could probably survive a building basically exploding. Yeah, but everyone else in there! Yes, it's like, yeah, later they found out that basically there was no one inside the bank, but it's like... I mean, seriously, the fact that they didn't even stop to consider that there could be innocent civilians in there and just blow up the fucking building by default. Uh, do do Yeah, it's basically kind of like, uh, also there was basically an instance of where basically like they captured basically again, someone they suspected to be a villain. They had no proof of this. They just assumed they were a villain and their immediate response to basically like, uh, uh, basically, like, uh, what basically having this person was to immediately torture them. <laughs> and these guys are supposed to be heroes. That's the thing here. <laughs> yeah, uh... And th this is the whole thing. You can basically try to argue, but me and Neo have actually discussed this. Okay. If basically if villain society, if hero society is willing to make exceptions to allowing them to basically kill villains that have done a lot of crime and stuff like that, then ask me this one question. Why is All for One allowed to live? Why did they not kill All for One? answer that question if you, if you can basically give me an answer then i will basically say you're correct but if you really do think about it in a logical way if they're not willing to basically kill all for one then honestly no villain should basically get the death penalty at that point it would just be stupid <laughs> i can only think of one possible reason and it's stretching it at best That being that if he was killed by Hero Society, he would be he would wind up being more of a martyr for the villain's cause than anything else. Which again doesn't make any sense. Like I said, it's stretching it to the nth degree, which is what hey, it doesn't really work. It's like if basically having this dude alive who can basically steal people's quirks, give quirks to other villains, make new villains, make no moves, it really doesn't make any sense to keep them alive if they were fine with killing villains, or at least villains that have done a lot of bad shit. <laughs> but no, it's like, all for one was allowed to live. They just put him inside basically like a cell. <laughs> and that was basically his faith. <laughs> Apparently inside the manga, we then found out that there's this secret branch of basically like the hero society that, oh man, they're super edgy. They have these heroes that are specifically made to be assassins and then basically kill certain villains and everything. Then why is basically all for one allowed to live? 
answer that fucking question story. It, it, it basically, this entire group's entire mission is to take out basically things that were being a problem in the Hero Society. Uh, basically, whether it be other heroes, civilians, or villains, then why have they not killed fucking all for one? He's in a cell. He's helpless. You can easily kill him. This makes no sense. <laughs> that is complete hogwash and bullshit, and I won't accept that as an answer. <laughs> I'm not trying to sound extremely cynical right now, but honestly... <laughs> So that is basically the whole thing inside this series. The players will have to basically keep in mind and basically live with the restriction that they're simply just not allowed to kill the villains. A restriction that I hope that basically the players will be perfectly fine with. Because honestly, this is my mind. Dead. It, it basically, if like the fucking like, like criminal and anything is just rotting in prison and everything, I'm perfectly fine with that. Allow them to suffer for their crimes. Yeah. I've always believed that basically just killing them is just basically letting them off too easy anyway. Yeah. But yeah, inside this series, do do. Um, yeah, we're gonna basically be rebooting it, and I'm not gonna have the characters from basically like the old series kind of like go away. I'm I, I was basically 100% planning on having them come back. Uh, all of them are going to basically be played by Neo. Hello. And we, we thought about ways to basically kind of like, uh, kind of alter their personalities a little bit. Um, kind of basically like make them so that they can fit with inside the series while still remaining somewhat true to their characters. Not changing them radically, but basically making it so that they still had basically like, uh, some of the intended purpose basically behind like the person who created them. Yeah. If it's not, if it's not too much for me to ask as well, would it be all right? I mean, if I just had, like, a short little log of the things we discussed for each of them, so uh, I have a reference sheet for when we do start up. Because chances are... Oh, yeah, don't... Yeah, yeah, don't, yeah don't, don't worry. I, I can do that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then you'll... And then you'll just end up ignoring it. I'm only cherishing this. <laughs> I will not ignore this one. do <laughs> do but yeah, um, there, there's also something else I basically did. It's like another thing that we did is we, we kind of decided to basically alter a few of their quirks. Um, some of them to, for them to basically make more sense with inside the universe. Others to make them less busted. Yeah. It's like basically Cameron's like uh, uh, basically quirk has been like uh, extremely simplified with his quirk, not just essentially him being Crystal Green Lantern. <laughs> yep, and a good number of the things we thought up actually require a little bit more effort on his part now. Yeah, Doo -doo -doo. effort and uh, effort and preparation. <laughs> yeah. It's basically, like, one of the key factors of, like, his quirk now. He can't basically, like, uh, he can't animate, basically, his creations or anything. Well, I guess he can, but not to an extreme extent with him. Just a... It's kind of, like, a big thing that was inside the series when you kind of think about it. If he's capable of creating these crystal titans and basically, like, these crystal soldiers, it's like... What was stopping him from just creating a bunch of them? Him sitting back and just let Dumbo do all the work? It's kind of like one of those things that just go, huh, you know what, now that you think about it, it's actually really weird. He kind of has the ability to create himself an army, and he kind of squanders that ability. 
it's kind of like I think that Cameron's uh, quirk kind of fell into the category that it just does way too much. <laughs> yeah. And there was the fact that the drawback of his quirk was honestly more of an upside anyway. Um, when it came down to basically Connor's quirk, uh, we kind of basically kind of altered it basically quite a bit from how it originally was. His quirk was originally allowed, allowed him to basically control the orbits and gravity, while now his quirk is basically just called Solar System. Um, basically, it has like a couple of applications, but I'm not going to go really too much into it and everything. Uh, because I kind of don't want this entire segment to basically take too long. So, yeah. I'm, I'm just going to basically skirt over it. <laughs> uh, Ian's quirk has basically been drastically simplified because, um, honestly, there was a lot of aspects about his quirk that didn't really make sense to begin with. <laughs> Like, his quirk originally was basically essentially he could, like, absorb kinetic energy and turn it into energy to himself. But he also has basically electrical powers. But he also has basically laser abilities. But then also basically, like, he has plasma abilities. <laughs> essentially, Ian just had kind of, like, four quirks that were kind of combined into one. <laughs> So we, we kind of like simplified basically his abil uh, to his work to basically like it being kind of like real uh, basically pretty much limited to just like basically like electricity and plasma and everything like him just having the same cork as his father. As, as well as basically like Ian's personality it's like um, we, we toned down several things about his character. <laughs> So don't worry, monkey. We're, we're not going to end up basically like uh, making fun of your character or anything. We're just going to tone down a, like basically certain parts about him. <laughs> Daniel, I, I, uh, we basically kind of completely changed his quirk, and uh, honestly, it's like uh, Seaman, when he was still here, he was playing on completely altering his quirk anyway, so honestly, yeah. <laughs> basically, his quirk is rather simple. It's now basically just called Shadow Puppet. It's like um, it's like at some point I'll kind of go into full details about how basically some of these characters' quirks work, but yeah, it's just like I'm just kind of giving a name and kind of like a brief synopsis. Like uh, with basically like uh, with basically Shadow Puppet, it's like originally he had those shadow orbs and everything, and he was also capable of creating light orbs, <laughs> and then twilight orbs. <laughs> His quirk was basically pretty fucking damn broken. <laughs> uh. Then we had basically like uh, Chris. Um, Chris's quirk was rather simple. Um, he just had the ability to bring art to life. Rather simple ability. We didn't really feel like we needed to change it. <laughs> And then finally, we have Alex's quirk. Yeah, we had to change this one a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's like, basically, it's like with each of these quirks, they kind of still have, like, elements to what they were basically kind of doing. Um, we're, we're basically like, yeah, we, we could not have basically Alex's quirk be the same that was inside the old series or anything similar. <laughs> It's like Ian's quirk was four quirks in one. His quirk was like fucking 30 quirks in one. <laughs> and that's honestly not an exaggeration.
So we, we kind of just made his quirk a lot more simple. His card, uh, his quirk just basically like is called just card trick. And it kind of basically like uh, makes it so that he kind of just has these cards that he has. And then he can basically kind of like use those cards, like magically animate them. I'm just going to use magic because the term magic, because that's the simplest way to explain it. <laughs> Making this work just overall simple. Doo -doo -doo. Or simpler than it was before. Uh, we then basically have like, uh, uh basically like, uh, Neo's old, uh, character from basically like, uh, the most recent My Hero series, that being Zachary. I don't know when Zachary is going to basically come into play with inside this new series. I honestly don't know. I honestly couldn't really give an answer. Um, but uh, Saint Zachary will probably like make a comeback at some point. Um, his quirks basically like uh, is basically like heavily modified. <laughs> Back inside the old series, he was the tree spammer. <laughs> Which in later years, I basically came to realize that trees are technically not plants, so that shouldn't have worked in the first place, but who the fuck cares? Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, it's like uh, just us kind of like uh, di just giving some brief things on this series. Um, it's like for this series, I kind of planned to basically bring back like uh, certain characters while also basically like uh, bringing some returning characters. This is this is kind of like a massive reboot and everything. It's like me kind of just going from like uh, from from basically like step one and then kind of like going, yeah, you know what, fuck it. I, I'm just basically like uh, I, I'm fucking basically like uh, redoing everything. It's like some series were necessary to have reboots. It's like, um, I guess on a technicality, I didn't have to reboot Shippuden and everything, but it, it's like when it came down to Shippuden, it's like it wasn't necessary, but honestly, I feel like that uh, it didn't really hurt the series to reboot it in the first. Yeah. It's like with Yu-Gi-Oh, honestly, it was really necessary to read the, the series. <laughs> because basically, the, like, uh, the fuck is his lore was getting so convoluted to the point of, like, this is starting to get so complex. And... With these changes, it should be a lot more straightforward for them. Oh. Hello, I am returning. Welcome back. Well, yeah. Um. Well, yeah. Uh. It's like with Yu-Gi-Oh, it's basically like uh, the lore was kind of getting so convoluted to the point of like, yeah, I kind of need to reboot this. It's like, what the fuck do I even do after Zexal at this point? How the fuck do I basically like right past the like fucking evil clouds? So yeah, it's like... um. So yeah, it's like uh, j just little factors like that. Um, me kind of deciding that the fact that, yeah, if any series does in fact need probably to reboot the most, it's like, 
uh, my hero probably needs like a reboot like more than any other series. <laughs> I think that uh, it is going it needs to be a lot of fun when it does start, it does free start up though. Yeah, it, it's basically like um, I, I kind of thought it basically like some interesting ways of how to basically bring it back. Um, as I have been thinking of basically doing a system like similar to Naruto because it, it's basically like I didn't get the full we didn't get to fully explore that combat system so. I thought it would be nice to bring it back inside this series. Yeah. Honestly, um, yeah, it's like, uh, ho hopefully I can basically, like, uh, uh ba basically kind of, like, uh, start, start us basically, like, getting working on basically several of these new series soon. Uh, we'll be able to start up basically JoJo, or basically My Hero, um, and then we can basically go ahead and, like, uh, get things like, uh, a bit basically, like, uh, go, go ahead and, like, uh, fucking... <laughs> Have fun with some new series. Do -do -do. Uh, we recently kind of just um, e ended our good old, our good old, <laughs> our good old Yu-Gi-Oh series, the first academy. So, I'd say let's uh, kind of go ahead and reach some new horizons. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. It's like uh, this weekend. Ho hopefully, we can basically like uh, discuss some stuff when it comes down to basically JoJo, uh, ba basically like a uh, good old My Hero, and then finally we can basically like uh, maybe talk more about this uh, fucking po Pokemon like uh, fucking tournament thing. <laughs> Which I'm gonna say right now, Woo Woo Cafe. Yeah, I I'm not gonna do that. At the yeah, it's like no matter how much you fucking beg me, I am not gonna basically do a new Pokemon series until after like, uh, until basically after Gen Nine, and I'm especially not doing another tournament while we're doing the Way of the Duelist tournament. <laughs> yeah, we be all tournamented out. As much as I like the tournament arc. I am not going to basically, like, uh, make us do too much tournament. <laughs> or else, basically, the tournament will start to get stale. But yeah. Um, glad that you can basically come and watch us today. So, see you later, Space Cowboys. Bye-bye!